So guys what if Naruto was trained by himself from childhood movie 1? The light shining through the canopy of leaves littered the ground with the cooling hues of green, the trees that make up this canopy are ancient, easily over a thousand years old, towering above the tiny figure basking in the safe warmth this cocoon of nature has made. The child, for only a child can be so small sat in the alcove of the gathering of trees reading from a battered and worn book. Its spine cracked from overuse, he wore an old white tee t-shirt which was slightly splattered with the dirt of the ground with a red spiral seemingly painted on taking up the center of his top and also the only color displayed on the child. His shorts were duller in color, gray with grass stains on his rear where he had sat upon the ground for so long. His feet were covered by the mud-caked sandals indistinguishable in color, atop his head sat his shaggy blonde hair constantly disheveled no matter how many times it was brushed. Occasionally the bangs of his hair would drop into his amazing blue eyes which head quickly and forcefully puff out of his way before head continue reading his book, his tan skin easily noticeable in the mid-morning light was wrinkled in great concentration as his eyes consumed the text before him. The crunching of the crisp new grass alerted the blonde to another presence in his little alcove of the forest, the stranger drew closer till the sound of their footsteps stopped, the boy finished his thorough investigation and glanced up from underneath his bangs at the newcomer. Naruto the old man puffed, serenely on his pipe, sinking down to the child's level and leaning back against the tree the youngster was sat against. For once a young you certainly are a hard one to find he stated whilst glancing at his blonde acquaintance, reading that book again are we. Sometimes I wonder why you like that book so much. He chuckled kindly I think it's time for a mid-morning snack don't you Naruto. Again he glanced down at the boy who was fast approaching the age of four cookies and milk, Naruto replied finally looking away from his book and showing his gleaming blue eyes. Of course, one's never too old for cookies and milk the older of the two replied pushing himself up from the ground while taking a puff on his pipe and extending his gnarled hand to the boy, with a grin spread across his whiskered face, the boy jumped up tucking the book close to his body and took the mon's hand in his own. Sunlight streamed through the window cascading across a desk overflowing with scrolls and paperwork. The leather-backed swivel chair occupied by a familiar old man. The third Hokage Hirazan Serutobi, turned from signing papers to his surrogate grandson Naruto Uzumaki who was at that moment dunking his cookie into his glass of milk as most children do. With adamant delight, half the cookie was dunked repeatedly before finding its way into the blonde's open mouth. The Hokage chuckled at this display of childish antiques. Naruto glanced up briefly to see the Hokage also dunking his cookies into his glass of milk. He fought back a yawn picking up his book and continuing to read from where he left off. The Hokage filled up his pipe with dried leaves and packing them in tightly before using a match to light it taking a few puffs he turned back to the sofa, to be met with an adorable sight. Naruto was curled up in the very corner of the sofa very much how a cat does with his eyes half-lidded and head tilted slightly and the Hokage's spare robes dwarfed the boy which made the entire picture that much more adorable especially when Naruto yawned and shook his head slightly trying to stay awake, he also noticed that Naruto had a milk mustache from the earlier snack, that boy never ceases to amaze me, how did he get my spare robes? The Hokage thought, he watched as Naruto lost his battle with sleep and his head lulled to the side. Small breathing noises evened out showing that the boy was resting. With a small thump the book that Naruto had been reading fell to the floor landing face down. The Hokage pushed himself out of his chair away from the demanding pile of paperwork, he moved quietly round his desk to the sofa grabbing the blanket draped across the back for just such an instance, and wrapped the blanket across the blonde, he softly carted his hand through the child's hair, smiling at his innocence, crouching down he retrieved the book glancing towards the cover then placing it on the armrest above the boy's head. The title read The Legend of the Gutsy Ninja he chuckled before returning to his chair, he sighed before starting on the paperwork which was mounted haphazardly yet organized on his desk. Naruto slowly woke, rubbing at his eyes gingerly, he looked up glancing around the room, where was his book? What happened to the Hokage robes he was wearing? And where did the blanket that was pulled around his waist come from? You know you can read other books besides that one. The Hokage replied raising the hand that wasn't busy signing the paperwork and pointed to the arm of the sofa where the book was situated. There are several bookcases stored in this room with books in them that you haven't yet read. His hand then waved vaguely around the room, 
Besides the desk that with its never-ending piles of paperwork and sofa there were two bookcases in the room as well as a nice little piano which was quite easily hidden behind the door, it was old but very well looked after, although ITD been some time since it was last played, a month at least, the two bookcases one tall and wide behind and to the left of the desk near the sofa and the other. Short and skinny, facing across from the sofa, they were both crammed full to the brim with books and the occasional scroll hanging out or on one of the many shelves. Stretching and twisting and turning like a cat Naruto rose from the sofa over to the smaller of the two bookcases scanning the shelves for something he hadn't read. He scanned the shelves at least twice before one book caught his eye head read everything in this particular bookshelf except this one, its bright orange cover was what drew him in he was slightly more partial to orange than most than the author of the book, it was the same as his favorite maybe it was a sequel, he slid it from its place in the bookshelf. The Hokage was signing away he completed a stack and a half of paperwork when a soft cough caught his attention, Anbu don't normally draw attention to themselves so why would, looking up he saw Naruto with a familiar orange book in his hands, the Hokage's eyes widened that's why the Anbu got his attention. Just as Naruto was about to open the book it was no longer in his hands instead the Hokage stood ruffled with the book in his hands, his eyes wide. Naruto, where did you get this book? Do you realize that this book is not for children's eyes? What were you thinking? The Hokage all but screamed. Naruto mutely pointed to the bookcase beside them where a gap had appeared signaling that the book had once resided there. Then it clicked Naruto was barely four years old of course he didn't know that he wasn't to read the certain books till he was older. Wait the book was found in his bookcase, but his copy of the book was in his desk third draw down, concealed by a gen just you, how did the book get here? Kneeling down so that he was level with Naruto and placing his hands on either side of his arms I am sorry Naruto I didn't mean to scare you, it was wrong of me to shout like that, I was shocked to see you holding this book is all, it should never have been in the bookcase in the first place, why don't you pick out a different book? Naruto still encased in the Hokage's arms turned his head to the bookcase gazing at the titles before turning his head back to the Hokage and shaking his head, but Naruto why, read he signed what all of them. The boy nodded what about the other bookcase? He inclined with his head, this time the boy shook his head, standing with cracking knees the Hokage guided the small child over to the second bookcase which was filled with more scrolls than it was books, picking one out he held it out to the blonde what about this one? He asked, the child nodded and took the book entitled Kohona, a history, moving over to the sofa he took his seat in the corner and began reading, with another tired sigh Sarutobi moved back over to his desk, Dropping into his chair, he pulled open the third draw down released the gen just you and was amazed to discover his copy of the orange book currently in his hand was exactly where he left it, where did this one come from then? Sighing he reapplied the gen just to close the draw and summoned an anbu to get rid of the orange book known as ICHA ICHA Paradise before once again commencing with his paperwork. The soft hum of voices wandering up the corridor alerted Sarutobi that his Jonan meeting was soon to commence he ran a wrinkled old hand down his face, Jonans although at the top of the carrier chain mainly, could act very childish if things didn't go their way, he shuddered at the memory of the last meeting and its resulting actions. He signaled to the Anbu stationed at his door to open it for the approaching shinobi, the horde of chattering Jonan and special Jonan descended into the room, with a patient gaze and intense glare the Hokage quickly silenced the room. Clearing his throat and just as he opened his mouth to speak a low rumbling growl filled the room every head turned in the direction of the sofa where Naruto was still sat reading although sheepishly as his stomach had interrupted the meeting. Naruto, I forgot you were sitting there, why don't you run off and grab some lunch, ill pay, just ask Chuki to put it on my tab. The Hokage smiled gently at the boy, sheepishly Naruto rubbed the back of his head placing the book down he uncurled himself from his cat-like position on the sofa and steadily made his way towards the door while the entire room watched his every move. A clearing of the throat stopped the boy in his tracks turning he raised his head to face the Hokage. Aren't you forgetting something Naruto? The Hokage inclined, a confused expression appeared on Naruto's face then when the Hokage held his arms out the light dawned. He gave a quick glance to the other occupants of the room turned a pleading look to the old man who just held out his arms and twitched them indicating a yes I am serious look to the boy. Embarrassedly Naruto made his way over to the old man, clambered into his lap where he received a grandfatherly hug. What grandchild doesn't give his grandfather a goodbye hug? 
But I am not your grandson Naruto signed shyly back. Maybe not by blood no, but to me you will always be my grandson he squeezed a little tighter before releasing the boy from his hold, now be off with you, go eat some food and remember it's on my tab. The retreating blonde merely raised a hand in acknowledgement book tucked under his arm, before disappearing out the door with a click shut it behind him. The lone figure glided silently over the rooftop stopping every once in a while to look down around him. Not seeing what he was looking for the figure moved on. Within a short space of time the figure had arrived on top of a building where three other figures were waiting. He inclined his head and each of the other figures replied with a negative response. They gazed about the village before disappearing off into different directions, each figure was on the lookout for a small blonde-haired boy, at the request of the Hokage, that was this morning with a few chunin as the search progressed the Anbu had been called in, it was fast approaching the evening, they had searched most of the village including the orphanage and the forest neither of these places held their elusive charge, the banners of the festival below hindered their search. Trust the child to wander off on the eve of the new year, well December 30th anyway, the child had always been a hard one to find, shaking his head he turned in the direction of the village gates where a brief chakra flare had alerted his attention. High up in a tree overlooking the gates of Kohona stood a blonde-haired boy clinging onto the trunk of the tree while hanging precariously out on one foot to see past the gates. All he wanted to see was what was outside of the gates. Head never set foot outside the village but he was curious, mainly trees, I suppose that comes with living in the village hidden in the leaves. A shift of pressure on the branch alerted Naruto that he had been found by someone from the way the branch was beginning to groan and how silently the individual had arrived head say it was one of the masked ones, a male one too, sheepishly he raised his hand to the back of his head and turned while rubbing at it, then with an almighty crack. The branch that Naruto and the masked one were on snapped, causing both to fall rather unflatteringly towards the ground. The Anbu maneuvered his body into a position that would allow him to land more gracefully as well as being able to grab the blonde child who was falling alongside him. But Naruto was no longer falling, his eyes were closed and he had spread his arms wide almost like he was flying the look of serene peace on his face startled the masked one. Naruto then opened his eyes and with meticulous feline grace arranged his body so that he would land without injury, the Anbu landed beside the crouched figure of the four-year-old, who would have thought a four-year-old with that much grace snapping out of his thoughts when the child tugged at his pant leg and tilted his head inquiringly up at him. The Hokage has requested your presence, although we are rather late as he asked for you this morning, the Anbu signed to the blonde, who smiled sheepishly again before walking in the direction of the village, the Anbu signaled to the figure stood on the roof and when they disappeared followed after the boy. The village was in a constant buzz of movement with the merchants and traders shouting and calling, rapping and stacking, racking and selling, the villagers running around buying, and packing, shouting and arguing, browsing and gossiping, the decorations were amazing. The villagers had really gone all out this year, there were blue and silver banners draping the marketplace, balloons with assorted colors although mostly consisted of blue, white and silver, streamers and was that a firework, it truly was amazing but what do you expect not only is it almost new year but it's not every day that the Hokage's grandchild is born a boy from all the blue that is decorating the village. The ground was glistening and sparkling in the winter sun's glow, and the two figures walking through the village were getting some rather disapproving looks. The blonde who had been gazing around eyes wide in wonderment and joy slowly began to shrink into himself. Eyes receding in size and mouth closing into a smaller more cautious smile. Till it seemed the child had all but disappeared allowing the disparaging looks to pass over him as though he wasn't there. The Anbu watched all this happen in but a moment and had to look to make sure the child was still walking by his side, angrily he sent a chakra flare towards the villagers but when he looked back towards his blonde haired charge he found he had flinched away, he's sensitive to chakra and graceful as a cat already. He stopped releasing his chakra and watched as the child physically relaxed. They carried on walking through the village passing all manner of shops and vendors when Naruto suddenly stopped. The Anbu who had carried on walking glanced back to see that Naruto was staring into a shop window, as he walked back to where the child was he found that it was in fact a toy shop, with lots of different cuddly animals displayed in the window, Naruto was cutely biting his lip while looking through his frog purse and contemplating whether he'd be able to afford it, the Anbu knelt down beside him, looked up at the display and tried to figure out what had the boy so enraptured, what is it? 
The boy's eyes widened when he realizes that the masked one is still there, and then he pointed to the toy in the window. Why do you want a toy now after being summoned to see the Hokage? We're already late as it is the Anbu replied. Naruto dropped his head so that his bangs covered his eyes and in barely a whisper it's for the Hokage's grandchild he stated simply, he wants to get a gift for the honorable grandson. The Anbu looked back down to the blonde when he felt a tug on his sleeve, Naruto held up his frog purse to the Anbu would you? The blonde asked, the Anbu looked at the boy in shock just as he was about to speak Naruto beat him to it, not aloud still using minimal words I see sighing the Anbu stood up and entered the shop with the frog purse in hand. After the Anbu returned with his frog purse and the stuffed animal Naruto just stared in awe at the toy, it was almost like he hadn't had a toy before, the Anbu returned the frog purse to Naruto before slowly giving the toy to the child, Naruto lifted the stuffed animal to inspect it turning it this way and that before nodding and clutching it tightly to his body, he smiled up at the Anbu in thanks, then moving off in the direction of the Hokage mansion with the Anbu trailing behind. Looking down at the blonde beside him the Anbu decided he wasn't entirely happy with how the blonde was dressed in this seasonal weather. Said blonde was dressed in merely a t-shirt and shorts with a tattered old cloak which barely had any resistance to the wind. Sighing and with a shake of the head the Anbu removed his black cloak and draped it around the boy besides him. The boy jumped when the cloak was draped around him. It was so big it practically dwarfed him, which was kinda cute with his blonde hair all tousled his big round blue eyes staring lovingly at the toy he had purchased. And tripping over the two long, cloak oops the Anbu grimaced before stooping down to pick the blonde up from his place on the floor, placing the child at his hip and setting forth once more, the child was so surprised at this action that he was stiff as a board and his eyes were huge, it took quite a while for the child to realize what was actually happening, he was being carried, how was he meant to feel in this situation? Slowly he started to relax as the masked one's heartbeat lulled him into a sense of safety and security, now that the Anbu had Naruto so close to him he could feel the difference in temperature it was apparent the child was warmer in the cloak but he frowned upon noticing that the child was so small and light. Naruto tapped the mon's shoulder to draw his attention to him and pointed up towards the rooftops, the Anbu getting the seldom speaking child's idea leapt up onto the rooftops and maneuvering the child into a piggy back position started jumping across the buildings in typical ninja fashion. The wind rushing through his hair was calming, he wanted to go faster. Barely a whisper in the wind but it was heard faster, gathering Charka to his feet the Anbu did as asked, it was like flying the blonde decided, it was amazing, exhilarating and he laughed in glee. The Anbu looked back when he heard the sound of laughter, Naruto was smiling and laughing as the wind whipped past him at an incredible pace, the kid barely even smiled let alone laughed but it was amazing his smile was so bright, innocent and contagious, but when he laughed, when he laughed you just wanted to join in with him, it was pure ecstasy watching the child enjoying himself, but with something as simple as a chakra enhanced piggyback. There was the smallest of knocks on the office door, followed by a series of shuffling noises before the door opened to reveal the glowing figure of a young woman with long dark brown hair which stopped just below her shoulder blades and small, angry looking black eyes, she was dressed in a long, loose fitting yellow maternal dress with a simple grey blouse underneath, she looked down to see the blonde shuffling from foot to foot. She smiled and moved aside allowing entry into the room, hesitantly Naruto crept forward into the room whilst Sayuri took a place on the sofa. Leaning over the sofa was a tall young man with short spiky brown hair, brown eyes and a brown bearded goatee, and slightly tanned skin, with a cigar held between his lips, he was wearing the standard black Konoha ninja uniform complete with open flak jacket, regular black shinobi sandals and a black forehead protector, and seated on the sofa with a bundle in his arms was the third, pipe noticeably absent. Don't you think we should get you in something warmer the woman smiled. Looking up the third spotted Naruto who was still dressed in his shorts and t-shirt, she pulled herself up from the sofa and held out her hand to Naruto, who hesitated glancing up to the third who smiled kindly and nodded, seeing this Naruto shyly took the woman's hand Sayuri doesn't bite Naruto the third laughed, the woman now identified as Sayuri bowed slightly to the Hokage and entered a room just off to the side of the office. Sayuri went over to a dresser to the right of the new room they were currently in and started rummaging about. Naruto looking around the room noticed a crib on the opposite wall to the dresser, a rocking chair in the corner with a bookcase next it, 
Above the dresser was a window looking out onto the village, the room was painted in a soft yellow color with green leaves painted on to create a border around the top of the wall. Now then Naruto how about we try these on then Sayuri said holding up a pair gray trousers and a pale blue hooded top, she placed the items of clothing over her arm and kneeled down in front of Naruto to help him undress. Arms up she said when Naruto didn't budge she just sighed Naruto, I am not going to hurt you silly, don't you remember me? He paused for a moment before slowly shaking his head. Sayuri laughed and then promptly sat down. Well then let's try this again my name's Sayuri Serutobi, the Hokage's daughter-in-law, my husband the man leaning of the sofa is Ikairu Serutobi the third's eldest son. I am a chunin rank ninja, while Ikairu is a jonin. She paused to look at Naruto here I used to read you stories at night when you stayed with the third. I'd also donate clothes and toys to the orphanage, is that better for you now Naruto? Naruto nodded at this and lifted his arms up so that she could lift his t-shirt up and replace it with the hoodie, next she helped him to step out of his shorts and pull up the trousers, smiling she stood up neatly folded Naruto's clothes and held out her hand. See that wasn't so bad was it? Naruto shook his head again and taking her outstretched hand they proceeded back into the main room they had left moments ago. Have you decided on a name yet? The third asked Ikairu embarrassedly placed his hand at the back of his neck and started to rub well actually we were kinda hoping that, well that you'd like to name him he said in his rough gravely baritone, the third shocked looked up from the bundle in his arms to first his son then Sayuri, who had once again taken her place on the sofa. Yes old man it would be an honor if you'd kindly name your grandson she replied whilst leaning forwards to pick up Naruto who tensed when he was lifted, and place him gently in her lap running her hands soothingly through his hair. I, well, thank you, what should I call you then little one? He said gazing down at his grandson, how about Yamato him? No, no that doesn't sound right, he gazed out the window over the village of Konoha then gently said Konohamaru. That's a wonderful name old man, don't you think Ichi? Sayuri sighed still running her hands through Naruto's hair whilst gazing lovingly up at Ikairu. Yeah it is he replied watching his wife. Naruto who had finally settled in Sayuri's lap tugged on her sleeve to gain her attention. When she turned to look at Naruto, he held up the cuddly toy and pointed to Konohamaru. Smiling Sayuri suggested he give it to Konohamaru himself. Carefully he removed himself from the lady's lap and crawled over to the third. He kneeled higher on the sofa and finally gazed at the bundle of blankets, there was a mess of brown hair atop the small round face slightly tanned face with small angry looking black eyes that were staring intently up at him he had an intense look on his face which instantly brightened when Naruto moved the cuddly toy into view the baby smiled and cooed at the toy which was then placed very gently into the bundle of blankets with the baby. That was very nice of you Naruto to buy a gift like that the third said but why that toy? He said pointing to the little floppy eared brown dog now wrapped in the blankets. Not a monkey came Naruto's small shy reply. The men of the Serutobi family proceeded to laugh at this noticing how the four-year-old didn't want to stereotype by giving the newest Serutobi a monkey. You know we got you a gift too Naruto Sayuri stated whilst indicating that Ikairu should go collect it. Moving away from the sofa Ikairu moved into the room where Naruto had changed and proceeded to come out with a neatly wrapped present, it was orange with a blue bow on top, it instantly caught Naruto's attention. However he wasn't too sure what to do when he was presented with it. You rip open the wrapping to see what's inside Ikairu explained, Naruto looked between the third and Sayuri before carefully unwrapping the present to reveal a set of pencils and a sketch pad. Dad said you were quite creative so we thought we'd give you an outlet for it Ikairu stated before showing Naruto how get started with his new gift. Sayuri gazed contentedly at her family, would you like to hold him Naruto? It's easy enough and I know you won't drop him Sayuri asked. Sitting back Naruto was shown the correct way to hold the baby by Sayuri and the third carefully placed his new grandson into Naruto's arms, Naruto glanced at Sayuri then at Ikairu and finally at the third all were smiling at him and the baby in his arms. There was the sound of a shutter closing and a soft cough that caught the attention of everyone in the room the Anbu that had collected Naruto earlier walked over and presented the third with the photograph he had just taken whilst ruffling Naruto's hair and removing the orange book which had suddenly appeared in Naruto's lap before fading back into background. Blue eyes gleaming in the corner of the room, all that can be seen in the darkness slinking ever so quietly to the cot in the middle of the room jumping up onto its railings. The blue eyes peered down onto the sleeping newborn, 
It was a strange sight looking down at this newborn, the slow rising of its chest, the shallow sounds of its breathing, the serene look upon its wrinkled little face, the blue eyes walked delicately along the railing, how easy it would be to simply just end it with a swipe of my claws but no, that wouldn't be fair, especially not to the mistress. Eyes turning towards the futon located in the room the shadow gracefully climbed down the railings and landing with a soft poof. Padded across the room to the futon and nimbly jumped onto the duvet. And now this one again he's come into my territory the strange little child with blonde hair and whisker-like markings on his face a small sniff. Smells strangely, almost demon-like, Blue's eyes widening. This is the demon, hump stuck in a little child how amusing. Turning smoothly away dropping from the futon with a small thump the shadow slunk gracefully towards the open doorway into the next room gazing steadily about the room before leaping up onto the bed, elegantly moving from the end of the bed to the middle noticing two occupants in the bed the shadow proceeded towards the left side where the female of the two laid, the shadow moved in a circle before laying down and closing its eyes. A patch of moonlight landed on the shadow to reveal a small blonde feline. Orange stripes patterned the blonde with a splash of white on the tip of its tail, the female moved her hand so that she was absently stroking the cat, enjoying the sensation the cat curled onto its back to reveal a little white underbelly allowing the human to stroke its belly. Line, two Anbu stood either side of a doorway minding their time to the end of their shift they were currently surveying the hallway which consisted of nothing, not one person had entered this particular hallway which made for a rather easy and boring job for the two Anbus. One Anbu was wearing a turtle mask while the other was in a cat mask, both were wearing the typical Anbu attire. A shift in chakra pulled the attention of both Anbu before the shift disappeared, cautiously the cat Anbu moved so that he was further down the corridor, glancing around he saw nothing till he looked at the plant he noticed a second shadowed shape hidden beside it, hem that's the cloak of invisibility technique, it's small, and it's about time my shift ended so that could only mean. A shift in chakra the other end of the corridor pulled their attention to that direction, how'd he manage to do that? Moving back towards the doorway cat positioned himself to one side of the doorway, hand prepared to pull out a kanai at a moment's notice. Da dum, the only sound in the corridor but where was it coming from? The two Anbu stationed outside the door looked at each other in puzzlement. Da dum, the sound appeared to be moving closer but where was it coming from? He's stalking us, the two Anbu looked left and right until. Da dum da dum da dum. With a flourish the cat mask that had been adhering the young Anbu's face was now moving at a frightening speed down the corridor. In complete shock both Anbu's watched as the yellow blur sped around the corner. Just as his Anbu partner was about to look at his unconcealed face, cat ran after the yellow blur he instantly recognized that was giggling with glee. Line. R-A-A-A-A-R. R-A-A-A-A-A-R-R. Naruto wait, I am gonna need my mask back. Naruto, wearing orange shorts and white t-shirt holding the cat mask, he had stolen off his favorite Anbu, on his face using both hands while running and making roaring noises and being chased by a mask less Anbu was having a great time. Cat was his favorite Anbu because he took the time to get to know him and play with him, he played all sorts of games, but hide and seek was his favorite. Running into the Hokage's office while still being chased by Cat. Naruto unknowingly disrupted an important meeting with the higher-ranking Anbu ninja of the village, Naruto stopped suddenly mid-stride moved the mask to the side of his head and turned to the Hokage and bowed in an apologetic manner. With mirth in his eyes the Hokage chuckled, how did you get your hands on that then? Holding his hand out waiting for the mask to be placed in his hand, with disappointment evident in his body he reluctantly took the mask off of its slanted position on his head and placed it into the Hokage's extended hand. Once the mask touched the Hokage's hand he threw it to the empty space just to the left of the crowd of ninja where it was caught and placed onto the face of the Anbu who was forming in front of him. Try not to lose that cat the Hokage reprimanded. Naruto, who was facing the Hokage with eyes closed so as not to see the Anbu's face, turned and opened his eyes to see the imposing figure of Ibiki Morino staring down at him. Ibiki Morino was a big bear of a man with a broad frame and scars covering his face. To most children he was the scary man, any child's nightmare, Naruto however cocked his head to one side whilst looking up at the man and smiled. Bear Naruto said, excuse me Ibiki questioned, Bear, Naruto repeated cautiously. Bending down to the child's level, Ibiki stared at the strange child before him. Why are you not afraid of me? Why should I be? 
Because of your scars. Scars are a measure of your endurance and testament to your skill and to your will of fire, knowing that you will give your life for the village and your Hokage. Besides scars are just damaged tissue and the worst ones aren't the ones that you can see. In here, he holds a hand to his chest and here he pointed to his head, besides you should never judge a book by its cover. Bear, Ibiki questioned. You're kinda like a bear all big and Gur Naruto replied while making gestures with his hands. For big, he raised his hands above his head and for Gur dropping his hands to his head and making clawing motions. Again Ibiki raised his eyebrow at the little blonde boy in front of him. Well you're big and all imposing like and a bear is big and the scars give off an ominous impression kinda like a bear and you're gruff and burly and have a long coat like a bear and it's kinda the first thing that popped into my head when I saw you. Naruto realizing what Ibiki had done, paused for a short moment then spoke. You're good by the way. Do you reckon they'll be awake now? Naruto said turning to where he knew Cat was standing. Who? Ibiki replies. The Serutobis. Not everyone's awake at 5 in the morning you know, especially if you've just got in from a mission at 2 in the morning. Come on little one let's get you somewhere where you're not causing a disturbance him cat's husky voice sounded as he bent and picked Naruto up and carried him out of the room stopping briefly to bow to his superiors in the Hokage. That's the most I've ever heard Naruto say, and to speak to you Ibiki of all people that's astounding, the shocked Hokage muttered. Line. Naruto hated his long shaggy blonde hair hated how the old mon's eyes would flick up to a picture in his office when he saw Naruto. Hated how people would comment on his blonde coloring, how ninja would stop and think about something then change their mind whenever they saw him or stop and do a double take. He knew why this was, the fourth, it was his fault, he had the same long shaggy blonde hair as Naruto, he died the night Naruto was born, he knew he needed a haircut so that people would stop seeing the fourth when they looked at him. Naruto was rather bright as he walked around the shopping district, wearing orange shorts and white t-shirt with a red spiral on the center and blue sandals, of course he didn't mind much it would help discover his prey or them discover him hopefully. The subtle scent of dog reached Naruto's nose before he spotted the wild spiky brown hair of his prey. Slowly Naruto approached being cautious to approach away from the wind so his scent wasn't detected, good practice for ninja training as he didn't favor confronting the dogs. Of course Naruto is only 5 so naturally someone noticed him as he was picked up by the scruff of his shirt and lifted into the air to come to the attention Soom in Azuka, staring down at the messy mop of blonde hair Soom was intrigued that Kuromaru had brought him to her. Please um in Azuka san I am sorry to have disrupted you but I was wondering if it would be um possible for you to please cut my hair. Naruto asked nervously while being growled at by the three Heimaru brothers. Head obviously interrupted the walk to the academy as both Soom's children were present. Soom looked at Naruto inquisitively well I um just wondered cause you must groom your what are they called not dogs said animals growled at him familiarly so I thought you might be able to um show me how I could do it, cause I am not sure that the barbers would allow me and Naruto trailed off. Familiars you mean Kuromaru corrected. Taking pity on Naruto fine pup but I got errands I need to run first she indicated her head at her daughter. That wasn't an experience that Naruto wanted to repeat too soon, the Inazuka compound scared him far too much to warrant another visit there, Soom Inazuka wasn't what scared him the dogs however did, animals just didn't like him, hopefully he wouldn't need a haircut again for a while. Line, Naruto wearing orange shorts and white t-shirt had got his hair cut, well had got it all sheared off so it was no longer in his eyes and he wasn't all hot and stuffy and all messy all the time. Besides nearly everyone recognized as blonde locks so by default with those locks no longer there he should NTB as recognizable technically speaking that is. Naruto looked over his shoulder as he walked down the road to see a small blonde cat. With orange stripes and a splash of white on the tip of its tail and stomach, Naruto quickened his pace moving effortlessly from the amassing crowds glancing back he made out the white tipped blonde tail bobbing through the crowds, Naruto was beginning to panic. Animals in general hated Naruto almost as much as the villagers did, he often found that cats would hiss and claw at him while dogs would growl and raise their hackles. So in general he tried to steer clear of animals even if he just wanted to pet them only the once. Which is why Naruto panicked when he realized that he was being followed by a cat, Naruto's quickened pace turned into a run as he tried to outmaneuver the following feline. Naruto glanced back once again as he turned into a dead end to find no sign of the blonde cat. 
Turning round in glee to face the dead end he saw the blonde cat stood atop the fencing where it leapt down knocking Naruto quivering in fear to the floor. Meow. From the entrance of the alleyway a masked figure approached the extremely frightened child cowering on the floor with a small cat leering over him. Hey little one, what's wrong? Asked the cat masked Anbu. Looking up with tear filled eyes Naruto jumped up into cat's arm where he trembled and sniffled and cried, shocked but catching the blonde figure carefully. Cat instantly started rubbing circles on his young charge's back trying to soothe him. Looking up from the quivering bundle in his arms to see Sayuri's cat staring at him blue eyes inquisitive, with its head cocked to one side, eerily similar to how Naruto does. Naruto why are you afraid of Lady Sarutobi's cat? Cat inquired. Wet mumbles against his chest were incoherent even to his well-trained ears you're gonna have to speak clearly little one, I can't understand your tearful talk he said whilst Naruto was wiping the back of his hand across his nose. Mum has a cat, Naruto sniffled into Cat's shoulder. Yeah she does, Cat nodded now are you going to tell me why you're scared of it? Naruto dipped back a little so he could see Cat properly. Animals in general hate me almost as much as the villagers do, cats hiss and claw at me while dogs growl and raise their hackles, it's kinda scary I'd understand if I done something but I don't think I have. How strange the little child thinks animals hate him when we're just reacting to the demon we sense inside him. Maybe he doesn't know about the thing inside him, quirking her head to the side a little. He said the villagers hate him then no wonder he's scared he thinks well do what the villagers do and I'd be quite willing to do just that with a swipe of my claws. The cat's eyes narrowed damn stupid villagers stretching languidly the cat straightened before swiftly moving towards the kneeling duo and upon reaching them started weaving along Naruto's legs rubbing against him moving round to the child's front the cat climbed up into his lap purring contentedly when Naruto after a quick glance at cat, hesitantly started to rub the cat's head who closed her eyes in contentment. See not so bad now is it? Cat asked. Naruto shook his head while still rubbing the cat's head. Smirking behind his masked cat removed himself from Naruto and his newfound feline friend cat glanced cautiously out the alleyway remembering what Naruto had said about the villagers, noticing a few presences either side of the entrance, he casually raised his chakra level which caused both Naruto and the cat to twitch momentarily, before lowering it again when the presences had retreated away from the alley. Now how am I going to explain to your mother about your hair? Cat stated as he ran his hand through Naruto's non-existent hair. Line. No bath. No bath. Naruto shouted as he ran gleefully through the corridors of the Hokage Tower. The ninja meeting in the Hokage's office could hear the entire commotion. How does he still have all this energy? The third thought whilst rubbing his forehead tiredly, and who forgot to shut the door. Damn ninjas. The ninjas in the room mostly contained disgruntled expressions upon hearing the voice of their ire which soon turned to complete shock upon hearing the next sentence. Naruto Uzumaki Serutobi. Naruto stopped running just outside the office doorway turning with eyes wide and face completely shocked to face the annoyed expression on Sayuri Serutobi's face, marching up to Naruto, face red and stomps landing heavily on the wooden floor. That made you stop, I see, next time maybe I'll add your middle name, huh what's wrong, why are you looking at me like that? She said anger quickly dissolving into confusion. You called me Serutobi, Naruto questioned in his quiet gravelly voice. It made you stop running didn't it? But I am not a Serutobi. Are you not the Hokage's grandson? Yeah, but I am not a real Serutobi he whispered. Oh Naruto, she said kneeling in front of him you may not be a Serutobi by blood, but we treat you like family that's why the old man will never let you go without receiving a hug, why I tuck you in at night read you stories, help you when you're confused or hurt, family isn't just about blood and who you're related to, it's about people you trust and care for and they become your precious people. Precious people, he questioned tilting his head to the side in a cat-like fashion. People who you trust and care for, they're the ones who become your precious people the ones you're willing to give everything for. Taking a breath she continues you may not understand it yet but you will one day and that's why you'll make such a great big brother to Konohamaru, she said embracing him in a hug. The ninja in the Hokage's office were stunned, they couldn't believe what they were seeing, the demon child was partially covered in mud with twigs and leaves sticking out all over his hair, and there was Lady Sarutobi willing, talking and caring for this monster and what she was saying really started to cause them to think. Granted you don't have Sarutobi in your name at all, 
but you're a speedy little one and I want you bathed and in bed by 8 o'clock how else am I going to catch you? Besides you've got a long journey ahead of you tomorrow, she said knowingly, the ninjas in the office face planted. No bath Naruto said stubbornly. Why what's wrong with baths? It's all bubbles and toys and little rubber duckies she questioned making little squeezing motions with her hands when talking about rubber ducks, Naruto had a blank expression on his face. Suddenly the Hokage's daughter-in-law got a dark look on her face I don't want to know how they washed you at the orphanage, she took a deep breath but no son of mine is going to stay all dirty and grubby because some incompetent fool can't see the little boy you are, I would never hurt you Naruto you know that, trust me when I say you'll enjoy a bath, it's lots of fun. Okay Naruto meekly replied and took Sayuri's proffered hand and together walked back the way they had come to enjoy bath time. Walking through the foliage of the ancient trees located almost solely in the land of fire was the Hokage, his escorting ninjas and their young charge who was accompanying them all on this long journey, the patterns of leaves where the light fell across the canopy scattered green hues shaped like leaves and shadows across the party. The group of five ninja were walking in blissful peace loosely surrounding the Hokage. The Hokage dressed in the ceremonial Hokage robes that he usually wore along with the traditional hat was puffing serenely away on his pipe whilst holding the hand of his young charge. Naruto with his new hair style, sheared hair, was wearing a blue top and black trousers with brown boots and an orange scarf his eyes darting everywhere in curiosity, Naruto was full of excitement had never been outside of the city gates before and now here he was with his favorite person ever and the Hokage his sort of grandfather. One of the hooded anbu that was chaperoning the Hokage and Naruto moved closer to the walking pair as the Hokage looked sternly down at Naruto still not happy that the child had his distinguishable blonde locks cut off leaving him with a considerable length of hair left on top with the sides cut a lot closer to his head almost like a faux hawk but not styled. The anbu nudged Naruto a little while inclining with his head towards the Hokage, Naruto glanced up at the hooded anbu and spotted the familiar cat mask. Nodding he took a brief breath and glanced at the Hokage. Hokage-sama what sort of trees are these? Naruto said as the group accompanying the Hokage walked down the forest path leading away from Kohona, and are they like the ones in Kohona? How old are they? Did they reach all the way to the fire daimyo's palace? Take a breath Naruto the Hokage chuckled I've never seen you so full of excitement. I've never left the village before Naruto stated. Oh of course he took a puff from his pipe what was your first question again oh these are trees created by the first Hokage using his wood release technique and they led quite close to the daimyo's palace and mainly found in Kohona, it would have been nearly 100 hundred years since he made them but I don't know how old they are. What's the palace like? You'll see Naruto. You want a tree jump Naruto cat asked seeing the smile light up Naruto's face he bent down allowing Naruto to climb on his back. Making sure he was safely on his back he leapt up into the trees keeping pace with the ninja that had remained on the path, I've got to remember to give Cat more time off he does wonders with Naruto the Hokage thought before signaling the rest to the ninjas into the trees, well it will make the journey take less time. Line. The town of Hainomaki was surrounded by a vast wall of white stone which eventually joined the daimyo's palace walls aligning the road leading towards the palace where the bustling villagers were wandering between the street vendors, crossing a bridge overlooking the river meandering through the town Naruto at last caught sight of the palace. The palace was majestic, made from the same white stone as the guarding walls of the town with dark green roof tiles, it was easily twice the length of the Hokage Tower with huge grounds and amazing garden with ponds and rivers flowing throughout the grounds with sakura trees blowing in the warm wind with pink blossoms dancing around the group they proceeded through the gates of the palace. Line. Ah Hokage-sama a pleasure to see you again the fire daimyo said as he greeted his guests into his palace. The daimyo was accompanied by two people who Naruto assumed were taking on the roles of the Hokage's anbu. One with a bald head and black eyebrows wearing robes belonging to the fire temple monks. With a sash tied around his waist. The other had brown eyes and longish black hair and wore a simple long-sleeved shirt with bandages on the arms, pants, the same sash as the other guard and a jacket with a fur collar. He reminded Naruto slightly of his dad then looking between the old man and the guard before him he realized there was a connection of some sort, turning to Cat he signed Cat who are they and what's that sash around their waist. The sash around their waist shows that they are part of the twelve guardians who guard the daimyo, Cat replied. I am Chiraku a ninja monk my friend here is Asuma Serutobi from your village the monk signed shocking Naruto. 
Naruto looked to Kat then inclined his head to the old man and Asuma. Yes the Hokage's son Asuma, your dad's little brother Kat signed. Naruto's mouth formed into an O shape before turning and rummaging through the bag his mother helped him pack. Finding what he wanted Naruto patted over to Asuma tugged on his pant leg to get attention when the young man did look down at him he proudly presented the gift to him. Taking the gift in shock Asuma inquired about the gift. Mum said that I was to give this to Uncle Suma, she hopes you like it Naruto then bowed to Asuma. Line. The Hokage and Naruto were walking through the palace grounds when they came across a group of children playing, they were dressed rather similarly, they each wore a style of grey robe with white trousers underneath if they were a boy or grey and white dress type robes if they were girls. There was one child with shoulder length bluish hair, who wore a similar outfit to Chiraku the ninja monk Naruto had met earlier, the children were playing with a ball trying to get the ball into one of two goals, Naruto watched as a child kicked the ball towards the goal closest to the guarding wall and missed by a wide berth causing the ball to ricochet after the wall and bounce towards where the boy wearing monk clothes was standing. Naruto, who had stopped to watch the child looked back up at the Hokage as he was pushed towards the playing children. Ask them if you can play with them. Go on, I've got to attend this meeting. But Cat will be nearby, don't worry, the Hokage said patting Naruto gently on the shoulder turning and walking in the direction they had just come from. Naruto turned his attention back to the children at play taking a deep breath and stepping out into the courtyard where the children were playing, Naruto slowly made his way over to the children until he was stood at the edge of their game, the children looked up from their game when they realized someone was standing on the edge of their game. Naruto sheepishly rubbed the back of his head when all the children stared at him. Hey he waved can I join you in your game please? He asked gingerly. Who are you? One of the girls asked. Naruto Uzumaki, from Konoha, the Hokage brought me with him he smiled. Have you ever played before? An older child inquired. No, the other kids don't tend to let me. Then what makes you think well let you? Freaky walked off with the other children following his example. Naruto's face fell he thought for once he'd be able to be normal have friends and play like all children do but even far from Konoha the jeers of his peers still continues. Moving back away from the jeering kids Naruto moved towards the bushes and trees that were lining the edge of the garden he was in, now hidden in the bushes he watched as a young girl approached the children, she was wearing an elegant purple dress with a pale green sash tied around her waist, her black hair was tied into an extricate bun on top of her head. Her purple eyes hidden behind her bangs, she approached the same boy that had turned Naruto down. Taking a deep breath she tapped him on the shoulder. Can I play with you guys? She asked boldly, turning around the elder child proclaimed but you're a little princess and princesses don't play. Go on run along to your lessons, princess, he sneered snobbishly, motioning for the other children to move on and continue elsewhere. The little princess turned on her heel and stormed away into the building. Naruto had watched the whole thing intently and decided that he was better off following the little princess he moved away from his hiding place and moved quickly back into the palace, he moved down the hallway in the direction the girl had run. Finally Naruto came across a room where the little girl was. She was in a sort of play room, Naruto had seen the one his parents had started to prepare for Konohamaru and him to use, this room however was finished and full to bursting with things for her to play with, there were games piled up neatly in the corner bookcases lining the walls, paint pots, crayons and clay in one corner and in the center of the room was the young girl Naruto was looking for, she had a big pink pony cuddly toy that was squeezed tightly in her arms. Are you okay? Naruto tentatively asked, shocked, the little girl spun around toy still clutched tightly in her hands. Who are you? Want do you want? She sniveled in anger. I am Naruto Uzumaki and I wanted to see if you were okay. He hesitantly replied. What are you talking about? Little princess, he questioned. The girl's face turned stony as she jumped up an expression of anger on her face, dropped the toy and exclaimed. I am not a little princess. I am Kimiko Shijimi the Fire Lord's daughter. Sorry, would you like to play together? Why would I want to play with you? Go find some other commoner to play with. Sighing Naruto shook his head little princess is used to make you feel isolated and alone. The children call you that because they are intimidated by your power and status, they don't like the fact that you're a girl who will one day rule the country, but girls can be incredible people, you just have to be willing to push past it Naruto said as he turned and left the room. Line. 
The Hokage was seated at one end of the table while the daimyo was seated at the other with the respected personnel surrounding the edge of the room. The Hokage started to stuff his pipe while he waited for the daimyo to start the meeting. Lighting his pipe his eyes wandered over to the fire guardian's station behind the daimyo. He noticed Asuma, he really needed to sort things out with him. As soon as this meeting is over the Hokage decided. Line. The third approached Asuma just as he was entering the guardian quarters. Asuma. The Hokage called hoping that his son would grace him with his presence, sighing and placing a cigarette between his lips Asuma turned to face his father. Why did you bring Naruto with you, old man? Asuma replied absently, lighting his cigarette with his silver Zippo lighter. Ikairu and Sayuri took him in and I thought it would be better if he were with me for a while so they don't have to worry about him while they care for their baby. Worry about him? Why would they worry about him? Why'd they have him anyway? He turned his head away and exhaled a puff of smoke. Naruto hasn't had a very nice life Asuma-san. Naruto was placed in an orphanage and that wasn't a very pleasant experience for him. They kept him until he was three, then chucked him out. He was living on the streets with occasional visits to me before Lady Sarutobi found and took him under her wing. He's still careful about what he calls us, Sayuri tries very hard to give Naruto a normal life and to allow him to call us by family terms hence why your uncle Suma. So he's a Sarutobi now. No he's still Uzumaki but he's welcomed into our family circle. You know it took me weeks to get Naruto to talk to me and yet he spoke to you practically straight away. Why didn't he talk to me straight away the Hokage thought sadly. Line. As the two important figureheads continued their discussion. The door situated behind the Hokage opened and closed allowing enough space for a small figure to walk into the room and unnoticed by all in the room make their way silently over to where the two figures were seated. Gazing up briefly at the figure closest the small figure clambered up the chair and into the Hokage's lap where he proceeded to in a very cat-like manner curl up and steadily fall asleep. The Hokage in surprise looked down at his lap to see a napping Naruto sprawled on his side whilst still curled head facing up much like Nami tends to do when dreaming. A small smile appears on the Hokage's face as he lovingly runs his hand across Naruto's non-existent hair. Line. Asuma and Shiraku had wandered into the palace gardens where the children were playing looking around they noticed that both the daimyo's daughter and Naruto were not playing with the other children. Scanning the garden they couldn't find neither hide nor hair of the two children. Moving through the garden the two guardians scanned the area hoping to find a glimpse of the two errant children. It wasn't until Asuma was stood under one of the trees that lined the edge of the grounds that he spotted a foot dangling a few inches above his head. Following the sandaled foot upwards he found a set of orange shorts which led into a black t-shirt which led to the blonde-haired Naruto. Naruto sat on the branch with one foot dangling down while the other propped up his sketchbook leaning back against the trunk of the tree. She's not out here, Naruto said as he continued his sketch while directing his question at Chiraku who had just moved up next to Asuma. Well where is she then? Asuma asked. Naruto pointed back towards the house with his free hand while continuing to draw in his sketchbook. May I ask why both of you aren't playing with the other children? Chiraku inquired. Naruto moved so that his sketch pad couldn't be seen by Asuma's prowling eyes. It's harder when you're a child of someone powerful or wealthy. People tend to have an opinion of you, and people like me tend to have a harder time in general he said as he closed his sketchbook and flipped out of the tree landing perfectly in a crouched position. So what are you two doing? Naruto nosily signed. We were just on our way to train perhaps you'd like to join us. Chiraku inquired. Can I? Really? Naruto sounded so unsure that it threw both guardians for a loop. Of course Chiraku replied. Sure why not just don't hurt yourself okay? Asuma stated as he lit up a cigarette, causing Naruto's nose to wrinkle when the smell hit his sensitive nose. It's gotta be a Sarutobi thing. That smoking business Naruto concluded grandpa's got a pipe dad's got cigars and Asuma has cigarettes, Naruto muttered whilst Chiraku chuckled and Asuma grumbled. Finally the trio came across a nice open space where they could begin training, Naruto settled down on the edge of the area with sketchbook in hand and the two guardians began their practice, first by stretching and relaxing their muscles before moving into the stances and commencing battle. Naruto's attention flickered between the two fighting guardians and his sketchbook it was interesting watching them train and even more interesting when he noticed Chiraka's stances. They weren't like anything he'd remembered seeing before in the books of Konoha. 
He assumed they were the fighting styles of the monks as that's what Chiraku said he was. The style seemed to rely on aggression, seemingly linear movements and explosive power. So Chiraku uses coordinated movement to generate bursts of power intended to overwhelm the opponent, simultaneously attacking and defending. Interesting. While Uncle Asuma uses trench knives and his stance from Konoha, Uncle Suma uses his trench knives for extra reach and is that blue. Naruto thought. He studied Asuma's knives a bit more. He could just faintly see the blue outline added to them. How's that happening? It's chakra I am sure. I wonder how he's doing that, Naruto wondered. Chiraku noticed Naruto had stopped sketching and was staring intently at Asuma's knives. He moved to end the session by putting distance between them and bowing. Walking over to Naruto the two men sat either side of the boy, with his attention twisting between the two, Naruto didn't know who to ask first, Asuma lit up another cigarette as he slouched with his hands behind him supporting his body, casting an eye over to the young blonde he noticed the fixation on his chakra knives, breathing out a puff of smoke he moved one onto his hand and showed it to Naruto, whose inquisitive nature showed in his face. This is my chakra enhanced trench knife, they are made from a chakra enhancing metal, when infused with wind natured chakra through chakra flow, it can easily pierce through stone, the thing is people can often misjudge the distance they need to avoid them as the added chakra lengthens the blade causing them to be cut even though it appears they've dodged the attack, he explained demonstrating what he meant by pushing chakra through the knife. Naruto's eyes widened in awe while viewing the knife and listening to the explanation and nodded to show he understood turning his wide eyes towards Chiraku waiting for him to explain what he was doing. The style I used appears to rely on aggression, seemingly linear movements and explosive power, using coordinated movements to generate bursts of power intended to overwhelm the opponent, simultaneously attacking and defending, it is one of the styles of the ninja monks, although I don't like this style very much I still need to practice, I prefer the style that relies on dodging and countering your opponent's attacks, would you like to learn some of this second style? Nodding eagerly Naruto jumped up and began to go through a few minor stretching exercises when fully stretched he stood intently in front of Chiraku awaiting instruction. Asuma, still sat on the side chuckled as Naruto was shown through the beginning stances of the ninja monk's traditional taijutsu when he noticed Naruto's sketch pad. Slyly he moved so that he was able to see the sketch pad better and just as he was reaching out to turn the page Naruto landed on the sketch pad effectively closing the book and stopping Asuma from seeing the contents. Naruto finally moved away from his sketch pad after staring down Asuma making sure he wasn't going to look again before continuing through the stances with Chiraku. Line. It was almost dark when Naruto managed to fall asleep on his feet. Chiraku called Asuma over and smiled at the young blonde Asuma picked Naruto up in his arms cradling him shifting him into a comfortable position and making sure Chiraku had gathered the boy's sketch pad they made their way back into the building. I've never seen someone learn so fast Asuma it's incredible, the way he easily understood what I was explaining, no four year old should understand the concept of chakra manipulation yet. He's a special kid, he's had a rough life so far from what I've been told and it's rare for him to open up like that, he's always reading or sketching as we saw, besides Kakashi Hataki graduated from the academy at age 5 so it is entirely possible that he's read the theory behind things and it then makes sense when that theory is then performed, perhaps he's like a typical Konoha genius. We get one once a generation, he's going to be an interesting addition to my family that's for certain, best get him back to dad now though he completely tired himself out with that training. Indeed Chiraku summarized, line, Uncle Suma why'd you become a guardian? Naruto asked as he, Asuma and Chiraku made their way into the daimyo's grounds, they'd been practicing and showing Naruto the basic steps that the monks at the ninja temple would go through. Because I wanted to help the daimyo rather than serving the king Asuma side. The king, Naruto questioned the two men in front of him quirking his head to the side. He's talking about shogi pieces it's one of the last conversations that Asuma had with his father Chiraku stated. In shogi the most important piece is the king and you can't have two kings. But surely the king isn't either the daimyo or the hokage, isn't it the children who will grow up to bear Konoha upon their shoulders, Naruto said as he stepped into the guardian quarters ahead of the two guardians, who looked to each other in wonderment at the wisdom of such a small child. Line. Jumping on Naruto's bed Asuma woke the sleeping boy by throwing the sleepy blonde high into the air, of course Asuma hadn't expected Naruto to cling to the ceiling like a spooked cat. Eyes wide and skin pale taking heaving breaths, 
running his hand along the back of his head Asuma sheepishly apologized while calmly talking Naruto down. Finally calming Naruto down and coaxing him into a clean set of clothing Asuma explained why he had come unannounced into the blonde's room, it has come to my attention that you Naruto cannot swim, therefore as your uncle it is my duty to teach you to swim, cat here will also accompany us, Asuma said as he helped Naruto get dressed. But cats can't swim, Naruto replied pulling his t-shirt over his head, both adults turned to each other and laughed, cat turned to Naruto. Naruto cats don't like water but they can swim, Kat assured while running his hand across Naruto's hair. Why is it so important that I learn to swim anyway, don't ninja just walk on water? Naruto replied pulling on his last sandal and jumping off the railings and running after the two walking adults. Kat looked at Asuma before turning round and facing Naruto who had finally caught up to the two walking adults. Ninja can walk on water yes but if your client falls in the water hurt or can't swim then it's your job to dive in and get them, understand. Kat said looking down at the little blonde holding his hand, nodding his head Naruto inquired where they were headed to. Arriving at a bridge crossing a river Asuma moved towards the left hand river bank while Kat jumped up on the railings before jumping up into a tree on the right hand river bank. Naruto follow me please. Right firstly Kat's not going into the water he's just keeping an eye out. He's my bodyguard Naruto stated. Something like that yeah, Asuma said running his hand along the back of his head, anyway there's three sorts of styles to swimming. Right Naruto nodded, okay so there's the breaststroke, Asuma sees Naruto's blank look and turned to Kat. Naruto looked at Kat sat up in the tree that stood on the opposite river bank. Like a frog, oh, froggies. Froggies swim like this Naruto moved his arms in front of his chest with the back of his hands touching palms facing outwards then pushed his arms forward and then cupping his hands and pulling them back, Asuma quirked an eyebrow in question. He pretends to be a frog in the bathtub now. Now. He didn't like water much Cat replied turning back to the blonde Asuma moved on to the next explanation. Okay then the front crawl, waiting to see if Naruto was going to show him what a front crawl was. When nothing was forthcoming he continued okay then so a front crawl is where the arm is making a spearing motion arching into the water, then pulling back out of the water preferably with the elbow exiting first, he demonstrated what he described, then went on to describe how he should be kicking while moving his arms, after making sure Naruto understood by demonstrating what had just been explained he moved on to the final way of swimming. Okay the final style is the backstroke, this involves lying on your back in the water, then moving first one arm in a backwards windmill motion followed by the other, you must kick using your full leg, does that make sense he said turning to Cat still sat in the tree. Shrugging Cat stated you've got to get him in the water yet though. Taking his fur lined jacket off followed by his shirt and sandals Asuma moved towards the river before changing his mind and heading towards the bridge, jumping up onto the railings, he glanced at Naruto before diving into the water. Rising to the surface of the river Asuma ran his hands up over his head and looked up at Naruto who had taken both his shirt and sandals off and was crouched on the railings looking down at Asuma. Are you coming in? Asuma waved out across the water, Naruto shook his head from side to side. You sure? It'll be fun, besides I need to know that you can perform those strokes. Naruto still shook his head, Asuma splashed the water enticing the boy in. Thankfully the river didn't have a very strong current but if he didn't know what he was doing Naruto could possibly drift away. Naruto shook his head, stood up, stretched and was promptly splashed by Asuma shaking the excess water from his body, Naruto looked down at Asuma to see him smirking up at him, we won't let anything happen to you if that's what you're worried about, Naruto nodded then moving in the exact way Asuma had, dived into the water and splashed Asuma with his entrance into the water. Naruto erupted from the water and proceeded to perform the backstroke, before turning and performing the breaststroke diving back under the water, then he began swimming like a frog under the water, then popping up in front of Asuma he spat the water in his mouth out soaking the elder of the pair, the shock on Asuma's face quickly changed to exuberance followed by a splash to Naruto's face, which quickly turned into a splash war. Cat sat up in the tree shook his head in amusement, Asuma was really bringing Naruto out of his shell. It was nice seeing the bundle of energy that he was, he continued to watch the two frolicking in the water. Line. Giggling with glee a yellow blur ran across the bank side followed by a rather wet looking Asuma Serutobi. Naruto was quite the slippery one, 
He was small and easily got out of the Guardian's hold, they'd run across both banks several times now. Asuma dived for Naruto and on making contact wrapped his arms around the boy rolling over and splashing into the river where they'd been swimming earlier. Coming up for air the pair were laughing enjoying each other's company, Asuma ran his hands up over his head through his hair causing it to stick up. You look better with your hair like that Naruto pointed at Asuma, whose hair was spiked up in the typical Sarutobi style. Naruto splashed Asuma one last time before exiting the river and pulling himself up onto the bank side, where he shook himself dry like a cat and was helped to get dressed by Cat who had finally come down from the tree. Asuma soon joined them on the riverbank and taking a leaf out of Naruto's book shook himself dry causing Naruto to get wet. Looking out at the setting sun Cat decided that it would be better if he carried Naruto, he was getting sluggish in his movements, hoisting him into his arms Cat set off with Asuma keeping pace back to the palace. Why do you decide to hang out with Naruto? He inquired a bit further down the road when he felt Naruto snoozing in his arms. Hum. Asuma looked up at the sky placing his hands in his pockets dad told me about why he brought him along, I was there the night he was born I remember it, I wanted to make sure I separated him from it, when I saw the way the kids treated him and how he resigned himself to being alone, well it's not how I'd imagine him to act. So you took pity on him? Cat accused, no, I figured he could use an uncle, he said pulling out the present Naruto had given him when they first met. Looking over his shoulder Kat could see the photograph he had taken of the Serutobis when Naruto was holding Konohamaru a few days after he had been born. He really likes you, you know, you're one of the only people he's ever opened up to so quickly, Kat replied smiling, he's put a lot of trust in you, don't break it, he warned. I don't plan on it, he said running his hand lovingly across the photograph. Line Naruto was once again in the company of the Hokage and the Fire Daimyo as they were concluding their final meeting, he was finishing one of his many sketches, when his head suddenly shot up. Wide-eyed he scanned the area, his ears listening intently. There was a small metallic sound almost like something was about to be released, looking up he noticed for the first time that the room was empty of guardians, not one was in the room and the old man hadn't seemed to have noticed the noise. In one swift movement he was on his feet and was standing on the table that separated the two leaders, closing his eyes he concentrated like he had been shown, there, the metallic thing had been released and was heading towards. Snapping his eyes open he launched himself at the fire daimyo turning his body in mid-air he managed to swipe the object from its planned trajectory landing precariously in front of the fire daimyo, Naruto pulled his hand back revealing the kunai that had been aimed at the daimyo. Bursting through the doors the fire guardians saw that Naruto had a kunai held pointing towards the daimyo, raising his hand to stop them from advancing any further. That was an incredible catch, you've truly inherited a lot of talent. Naruto how did you know that was going to happen? Asuma questioned walking over to the little blonde boy still stood on the table. I heard the sound of scraping metal Naruto stuttered but I didn't know where it was heading I had to wait to find out he stated holding out the kunai to Asuma. Chiraku noted where he believed the angle of the kunai was thrown from and caught the guardian's attention leaving the room with six other guardians while the other four took up positions around the room. Well come on Naruto let's get you away from this hectic situation and get this meeting underway Hamasuma inquired scooping Naruto into his arms and moving towards the door stooping down to pick up the sketch pad as he passed, don't worry dad it'll look after him, he announced as he passed the Hokage who had risen from his seat the moment Naruto had jumped onto the table line see if the land of fire had only one king this situation wouldn't have happened a dark-haired guardian snarled kazuma this situation happened because we were too lax in our protection if it hadn't have been for naruto wed have dead a daimyo on our hands chiraku stated that was a courageous thing to do you know but not just anybody can protect the fire daimyo kazuma accused directing his scorn at the blonde-haired hero well maybe we should make him an honorary guardian then a mohawk wearing guardian stated. Really, Naruto's shy voice asked from the doorway. Well you did act and do as a guardian would so why not? To the only female guardian stated why don't you do the honors Kazuma too goaded. Fine fine, Naruto, Uzumaki Asuma stated, Naruto Uzumaki, I would formally like to appoint you an honorary fire guardian, Kazuma gritted out bowing respectfully and thanks Naruto then left the room to find Cat. Line. Being in a procession of people was unnerving to Naruto had never been around so many people before. 
Even walking the streets of Konoha was easier than walking with this group of people. The procession consisted of retainers, teachers, council members, guardians and all because of one little girl. Kimiko Shijimi the Fire Lord's daughter was accompanying her father the Fire Daimyo as they walked together towards the town. Well not exactly together the Fire Daimyo was at the head of the procession with his advisors while Kimiko was further back surrounded by her teachers each pointing things out and calling to her trying to gain her attention, she sullenly stared after her father obviously seeking his attention. Naruto and Kat watched this from the back of the procession. Crossing the bridge the procession had to either filter out into smaller lines or try to all cross at the same time. Of course the fire daimyo's procession was full of people trying to grab his attention or get into his good graces by teaching his daughter an heir. It was just after the sudden surge of attendance that Kimiko slipped through the railings of the bridge and with a splash landed in the water. It wasn't until the procession had passed the bridge that Naruto noticed that Kimiko was no longer with them turning quickly he noticed the ripples on the river before she emerged spluttering for breath and thrashing around in the water in her panic. Naruto. Kat shouted reaching his hand out as Naruto shot past him, performing a perfect dive into the water, Naruto proceeded to swim out to where the princess had fallen in. Stop thrashing Naruto commanded which instantly shocked the princess into stillness allowing Naruto to maneuver himself around her and slung his arm around her chest and proceeded to swim back to shore, where he allowed Kat to lift the honorable princess onto the bank, before pulling himself up. Naruto shook himself dry, water droplets flying everywhere, turning to Kat he saw that Kimiko was still sopping wet. Oh honorable princess, what a silly thing to do, throwing yourself into the river like that, a member of the procession cooed. Yes now you're all wet, how on earth will you ever get dry now? Someone else agreed. That was a silly thing to do dear the fire daimyo said turning to Naruto good thing this young man was here, before walking off at the head of the procession. My lord Naruto called she didn't throw herself in, she was pushed, when your procession surged forwards across the bridge she was unprepared and was thrown through the railings into the water. If you didn't rely so heavily on your retainers they wouldn't constantly search for your attention and Kimiko wouldn't have to vie for your attention. Blasphemy. One retainer shouted. What would you expect from a demon? Kane muttered from somewhere in the crowd. The fire daimyo was surprised at this outburst. I am afraid I don't like your tone young man. I am going to have to ask you to leave. He asked and you seemed like such a nice boy too he added. Scrunching her face up in anger Kimiko stated I would like to stay with Naruto, I will see you at dinner father. Oh the fire daimyo was shocked at his daughter's sudden outburst, very well then darling he said before continuing on with his procession towards the town. Thanks Naruto Kimiko shyly replied and you too, cat is it. Nodding his head cat began leading the way back towards the palace. Line. Heading back to the palace Kimiko looked at the ground you know you're the only person to recognize me by my name. I know what it's like to label, besides Konohamaru Serutobi is always referred to as honorable grandson and he's only a couple of months old. Walking a bit further on Kimiko again looked at the ground before speaking, why did you save me? Kimiko burst out I mean I wasn't very nice to you each time you came to ask if you could play with me, she stared at Naruto causing her to trip over her wet robes. Because I think you'll make a great ruler one day, but I know you'll make a great friend, he said holding out his hand for her, she looked at the hand before taking it and smiling, besides, everyone deserves a second chance. Line. Knocking on the door Naruto announced his presence to Kimiko who was reading a book, looking up from the book she smiled. You were right you know, this book is really good, my nanny's read it to me loads of times since you said about it. It's my favorite. Naruto replied smiling you wanna play outside? He asked. But what about the other kids? Who cares about them if they won't let us play with them? We've played inside for days now I don't think there's much more we can do in here and we'll have to face them eventually, we'll play together and have fun and if they want to join in then we shall them, rising above their taunts. Closing the book she delicately placed it on the table turning she grinned taking Naruto's hand. They ran out the door to the garden where the other children would often play, they walked past the children playing a game with a ball, moving to an open area just far enough away from the other children, Naruto hunkered down on his haunches and started marking out a court of ten boxes, looking up he smiled, hopscotch, nodding her head Kimiko started looking round for something to use as a marker, 
Returning with a stone she noticed that Naruto drawn a 1-2-1-2-1-2-1 shaped court. Throwing the stone Kimiko landed on the square with three inside picking the stone up she gave it to Naruto who then threw it causing it to land on the number 4 square picking it up he returned to the beginning and aimed at the 1 square, the stone landed perfectly in the square allowing Naruto to proceed through the game. Line. After completing the game Naruto won 6-4. Kimiko decided that they should play hide and go seek, they were suddenly joined by the child with shoulder length bluish hair. I am Sora, I was wondering if I could play with you guys, I am getting a little bored of the ball game. Looking at each other they smiled, okay, I am Kimiko and this is my friend Naruto Kimiko answered while pointing to both herself then Naruto, he'll start counting to 10 while you two hide first one found is it next round. Hi they both chorused before disappearing around the garden. Sora was hiding behind a bush near the other children, while Naruto had snuck underneath the steps leading into the palace, reaching 10 Kimiko turned round and scanned the area, not noticing either of the boys Kimiko started searching in the bushes and trees at the edge of the garden area before moving towards the center of the garden. Looking round she spotted the robe that Sora was wearing poking out from behind a bush by the other children, running over to the bush she jumped behind it pointing and calling. Found you. Sora blinked in surprise then smirking stood up from his hiding place, together they continued looking for Naruto. He's under the steps over there, a pair of twin girls pointed to the steps leading into the palace, running over to the steps they dropped to the floor looking under and saw Naruto smiling back at them. Can we play too? The girls asked, giving her consent Kimiko started the next round with Sora seeking this time, he found the twins first then Kimiko but was struggling to find Naruto. Cat Kimiko called as Naruto on the roof. No but why don't you try looking closer to the ground he uttered from his perch on the roof. Okay Naruto we give up, come out, Naruto dropped down from a tree next to the wall. Can we join in too? The balls gone missing the remaining children asked. Okay Kimiko smiled, it'll be it Naruto volunteered, turning so the children could start hiding he began counting to 10, you know you didn't have to steal their ball. I don't know what you're talking about Catalurd chuckling he moved away chucking a ball up into the air. Ready or not here I come. Naruto shouted running into the bushes searching for the other children. Line. Sayuri was reading a battered green book often found in a certain blonde haired boy's hands, absentmindedly stroking her blonde cat while Konohamaru was asleep. For once, since Ikairu was away on a mission Konohamaru had been restless lately. Thankfully Naruto and the old man had just returned from their trip to the fire daimyo, as evidenced by the sleeping boy on the sofa wrapped up in the blanket the Hokage had draped across the back of the sofa. So when is Ikairu due back? The Hokage asked lighting his pipe. Well he should nt have been sent out anyway we both know that, but he's as stubborn as you are, she smirked when he found out that he wasn't on that mission. Well you can imagine. She stood up closing the book and clasped it to her chest and walked over to the window overlooking Kohona he should have been back by now, she answered leaning against the Hokage who had come to lend her his support. Line. Nami. Lady Sarutobi's cat suddenly woke up from its curled position on the sofa. Its head snapping to look out the window at full attention now, like it had sensed something had happened, this was followed by Konohamaru waking from his slumber and screaming out great wailing cries. Naruto who had also been asleep had woken to stare out the same window that Nami was, picking up Konohamaru from where he was lying his wailing continued even as the pounding rain that had started as soon as Nami had stared out the window continued to fall. No she gasped, holding Konohamaru closely to her chest. Line. The ninja were lined in their funeral clothes. The rain that had been plaguing the village of late was still falling. Almost like the heavens themselves were crying. The only sound amongst the mourners was that of the wailing baby held tight in his mother's arms, the rain mixing in with her tears, to her side was the third Hokage, pipe noticeably absent, tears freely falling down his face mourning the loss of yet another shinobi taken before their time, Naruto dressed in black stood back from the grieving figures, watching as the shinobi paid their respects before disappearing into the dreary sky. Turning he saw Asuma Serutobi move up to stand next Sayuri the grieving wife and mother. Konohamaru still crying in her arms, Asuma touched her shoulder turning her to him, he was dressed in the typical black Konoha ninja uniform complete with flak jacket, regular black shinobi sandals and a black forehead protector, and sash tied around his waist, his hair was now styled into the Serutobi style, short black spiky hair, 
with the makings of a beard beginning to grow. He looked like a much younger Ikairu. Seeing this Sayuri burst into tears and buried her face into his jacket, with Asuma enveloping her into his arms. You should join them you know, he was yours too, you have a right to mourn as well, Kat said in a whisper. But he wasn't really mine, Naruto mumbled the rain dripping down his face. Naruto, right now your mum's going to need you, yes she's got Asuma and the third to help her although she's hurting but you're her family too, don't forget that. Cat voiced before moving back into the shadows leaving the Serutobis and Naruto alone at the grave of Ikairu Serutobi. Naruto, dressed in black top and trousers made his way towards his pseudo-grandfather, took his hand and placed a white rose on the grave marker whispering you were one heck of a dad running his fingertips along the inscribed name, he looked up at the third who smiled gently down at him tears still leaking from his eyes, Sayuri gave an agonizing sob when she heard Naruto's words. Naruto turned to his mother figure when she continued to sob, not knowing what to do he let go of the third's hand and hugged her legs tightly. Mummy please don't cry, I know you're hurting, we are too, but you still have Konohamaru and Grandpa and Nami, Uncle Asuma and me, if you still want me that is, Naruto exclaimed. Oh Naruto of course I still want you, she said wiping away her tears and putting on a smile for him, you're my son no matter what, I will always love you. She hugged Naruto tightly thank you she whispered the last part, so only Naruto could hear. For what? He whispered held tightly in her embrace. For reminding what I still have, she kissed Naruto on the cheek. The rain had stopped some time ago leaving only the orange of the sky as the sun set, Sayuri with a quiet Konohamaru in her arms, Naruto holding onto her unoccupied hand and her very prominent family members either side of her, together they watched the sun set. Red was everywhere. In every direction he looked, the red swirling mist descended on the village almost as if it had been summoned there, turning his head he saw the forest trees ablaze with fire and buildings ripped from their foundations with a swing of his mighty tail, the ground cracked open as a second tail struck the earth, the remaining seven tails swished menacingly in the air, lashing out haphazardously at the slumbering village. Flowing around the four gigantic claws was a river of blood as the people ran aimlessly beneath the claws to a horrific, mutilated death turning his muzzle to the sky and releasing a mighty roar causing the sky to split open. Awoken by the sudden noise, Naruto shot up from bed covered in a cold sweat only to realize that it was his scream that had woken him from his nightmare, cutting his scream off Naruto clapped his hand over his mouth, breathing heavily through his nose, Naruto's eyes darted around the room, gazing over at the cot where Konohamaru was asleep he waited to make sure the two-year-old really was still asleep. With a swish crack the room was lit up by lightning followed by an almighty boom of thunder. Curled up with his thumb stuck in his mouth, hair sticking up in typical Sarutobi fashion and in blue pajamas was his little brother, Konohamaru who was facing Naruto, but still fast asleep, looking through the doorway he could just make out his mother asleep in the double bed and Nami curled protectively into her side. Realizing his scream probably hadn't woken anyone up, he clambered out of bed and made his way to the playroom where his sketchbook was located and tucked up in the corner of the room he began sketching what he had just seen. Line, sorry I am late, I am afraid I got lost on the path of life Naruto apologized as he knocked on the door to the Hokage's office, shocked the Hokage nearly fell off his seat when he heard what Naruto said, he hasn't even met the man and he's already emulating him the third thought. Moving from his chair with his overflowing desk to Naruto, Gently placing his hand on the blonde's back he guided him over to the piano station behind his door. It's okay Naruto at least you turned up this time the third reproached, Naruto sheepishly ran his hand through his now spiky blonde hair, while pulling at the bottom of his blue hooded top with a black stripe running down both arms. Naruto, do you know who Kakashi Hataki is? Kakashi Hataki known as Sharingan Hataki or Copycat Ninja graduated as a genin age 5 and chunin 6 son of the white fang sakumo hataki okay enough you really need to stop reading the bingo book anyway have you met him it's interesting and i've read everything else no i've not met him why no reason flexing his hands the hokage began to play a slow melody while naruto eagerly watched his every movement Remember keep your hands spread like this before you begin your practice the third demonstrated spreading his fingers wide one hour Naruto, that's all I want from you, no skipping out, the Hokage sternly warned, returning to his overflowing desk leaving Naruto to practice the piano situated behind the door. 
Looking up from his paperwork the third gazed over at Naruto before his sight was drawn to the pictures of the Hokages lining his wall finally settling on the last one, the fourth, the blonde-haired tanned-skinned blue-eyed face of a much older version of Naruto stared out from the frame, he's so much like you, it's scary the third thought, remembering the time he had taught a young Minato to play the piano. With a pounding crash Naruto slammed his hands down on the keys of the old piano, turning and glaring at the old man he stood up and angrily made his way over to old man where with gritted teeth he hissed. I am not him, barely above a whisper but the third still heard. Turning from one blonde to another the third didn't have a chance to say anything as his young blonde charge flew out the door slamming it shut behind him. Damn it, why did I send Cat out on a mission? He grumbled I can't go after him yet he thought looking at the paperwork littering his desk, maybe I should just let him calm down and inform Sayuri, turning back to his desk he suddenly thought how did he know I was looking at that picture? He must have sensed me looking at it, but does he know? The third worriedly thought looking back at the picture of the fourth. Line. The sun was setting its golden glow spreading across the village. Located just outside of training ground three there stood the memorial stone, it held the names of every shinobi who had died in battle, the sun's glow caused the stone to light up revealing a small six-year-old sat in front of it, leaning forwards he placed his hand on the stone then lightly traced across the names with his finger learning every curve, crevice and scratch that marked the stone. He traced the name several times before he sat back on his legs kneeling in front of the stone. Moving the bag next to him that he had brought, he slowly emptied it an item at a time. Pulling out flowers which he gently placed at the base of the stone. Next was some food, takeaway ramen, which he placed to the left of the flowers. Then he produced some candles placing them each in height order in a triangle-like shape to the right of the flowers. Then two toys one a blue teddy bear and pink teddy bear arranged behind the ramen sitting with their backs to the stone. Then he placed a few ryos and two pieces of yen, which were added next to the candles. And finally a picture was added to the pile, it contained an image of the first person on the memorial stone that had died the night the Kyubi attacked, this was placed behind the flowers, bending he lit the candles with the zippo lighter he had borrowed from his uncle. Naruto in his blue hoodie and grey shorts fell back and kneeled his hair which had grown back in length fell forward into his eyes, bowed his head in prayer. The Hokage would find him later after he had fallen asleep in the prayer position, bending down he examined the items that Naruto had placed in front of the stone, amazed at the range of things he had bought, soon he was shocked when he saw the picture and who exactly it was, he looked over at the child wondering just what he knew of this world. He folded the bag and as it was tipped upside down a small item fell onto the ground, bending to pick it up he found that he held a small scarecrow figure made from straw bent ever so gently so as it didn't break, smirking ever so slightly he placed the figure on top of the stone knowing exactly who the present was for, turning he saw Asuma and Sayuri approaching, standing he moved so that they could see just what Naruto had set out. Asuma stooped and picked Naruto up while gazing at the offering laid out in front of the stone. Sayuri kneeled and traced her hand gently over the name of Ikairu Serutobi and bowed her head in prayer, bowing their heads in prayer the two male Serutobis paid their respect to their fallen family, standing up Sayuri joined the two males. It makes you wonder how much he really knows, doesn't it? Sayuri stated. Well just have to wait and see the third wondered aloud. He wouldn't let us know even if he did know Asuma said before turning and taking the sleeping boy home followed by Sayuri and his father. Line. Screams and shouts filled the air, terror and fear mingled with the stench of death and decay. He was above them all with the red mist swirling around him he swiped at the ground with his claws and his tail swishing tearing up the trees and buildings before fling them at the hapless people. His fur was dripping with blood as he gnashed his teeth at a new group who had decided to attack, howling with rage as someone managed to slash across his paw, lift up his other paw he slammed it down feeling the person underneath squishing out. Smirking in glee his great muzzle turned and released a great ball of energy into the oncoming hordes. Waking up once again in a cold sweat Naruto frantically searched around the room Naruto was met with the sight of his mother sat in the rocking chair in the corner of the room, in her arms was Konohamaru being gently rocked back and forth, obviously Shed just got him back to sleep. Naruto, what's wrong? She asked. Shaking his head Naruto pulled his knees up to his chest hugging them close, Naruto please talk to me. How can I help you if you want let me in please Naruto. 
She placed Konohamaru back into his cot bed thing and walked over to the wardrobe where she pulled something out. I am here if you need me, you know that. She placed the item in her hand onto Naruto's bed. Before walking out the door, looking up from his knees Naruto saw the teddy bear he was given the day he was born. It was small and had originally been white. It had two brown patch marks one on each foot and another on the top of his head just next to his ear. He had a small face with a big brown nose and small black eyes. He was made out of that soft material that was ultra mega soft. The old man had given him it. To help him sleep as a baby he smiled fondly at the bear. It was called R.O. Line. I am getting worried Asuma. Sayuri confessed something's up with Naruto. He's got black eyes almost like he hasn't slept in days. He's becoming withdrawn and it's getting worse. I am scared he'll go back to how he was before we took him in. She stopped the washing up that she was doing and turned to her brother-in-law as he finished off the plate he was drying. What was he like? Before I mean, he questioned placing his tea towel on the counter as he sat down on the island counter that separated him from Sayuri, turning she dried her hands on Asuma's discarded tea towel. He was quiet, quieter than he is now, she took a breath. You know when I spotted him after I left the orphanage, I thought he was a ghost or something, there was no way someone would let a child out by themselves at night but there he was, he was so malnourished his clothes which were torn and dirty, were way too big for him, he was covered in dirt but you could just make out his wild blonde hair and his eyes, his eyes were so empty, like he had seen things no three year old should, as I moved to get closer to him he vanished. Imagine my surprise when he turned up the next day at the old mont's office, he was so quiet, as I drew closer I realized he was signing to the old man, I questioned him, which must have startled him as his eyes which had been so warm before had suddenly become empty and wide. He bowed quickly and then moved incredibly fast out the door, the old man was shocked, when I explained how I had first encountered the boy he was fuming, I think if I hadn't have seen him that night he might not be where he is now. He's really come out of his shell hasn't he? Yeah, I just don't think he trusts me. What makes you say that? He woke up in the middle of the night, the other day and when I went to comfort him he retreated into himself, she started to cry. I am sure he trusts you, he just probably doesn't know how to tell you, Asuma said standing and taking her into his arms, he lightly kissed her forehead as a sign of comfort, Naruto was stood behind the door had heard the entire conversation, moving away quietly he headed to the bedroom. Line. Bear Naruto with his bear tucked tightly in his arms knocked on the Hokage's door knowing that he was in there, hearing the call to enter he did so and when seeing that bear was indeed in the room the six year old ran over to him and stopping just short. I am, I've been having nightmares, and I didn't want mum to worry but I don't think she can help me this time, but you're an expert in the mind you should be able to help me, he handed over his sketchbook, please bear he pleaded. Ibiki looked up to the Hokage before looking back down at Naruto. I don't know how I can help little one he said going down to Naruto's level. What happens in your nightmares Naruto? The third asked moving around his desk so he was level with Ibiki. Everything's red I am towering above everything and there's blood and bodies everywhere and then my tails and claws destroy the village, it's kinda like I am the fox demon that attacked Naruto whimpered, Ibiki and the third began to flick through the sketchbook. Looking through the sketchbook each picture depicted a scene of destruction involving the Kyubi. The order of the pictures showed how the events unfolded exactly on the night of the attack. Naruto where are you in all this? The Hokage asked dreaded the answer. I am the demon causing all the chaos he said head bowed I don't understand why though. I am not old enough to remember this he asked, looking between each other the two shinobi didn't know how to answer. Naruto can you wait outside for a minute please? The third requested. Why did he come to you? What does he think you can do? The third continued. Maybe he thinks I can ease it from his mind, because I am good with the mind. Ibiki replied running his hand over his bandana. Or maybe you could explain it to him so that he understands and doesn't have to be afraid anymore, Kat said as he entered the room through the window, covered in mud and showing a few more cuts and bruises than necessary. He wants reassurance that he isn't that monster and that they are just dreams, Kat continued stretching as his squad appeared in the window behind him. But how do I explain that to him? Ibiki questioned worried that the boy had chosen him for this task. Carefully, he's not an idiot hell pick up on things quickly, so much so that he may have figured it out already and he just needs to hear somebody say it, 
Cat signaled for his team to disappear quickly then jumped on the window. Why me? Ibiki queried it makes no sense. Because it has to be someone who doesn't know him that well, that can see past everything, he said faded into the background. Naruto you can come in now the Hokage called, opening the door the blonde peeked in, before tentatively walking over to the duo, he stood head bowed waiting for one of them to say something. Naruto Ibiki began you're not the fox demon your mind has just conjured up these images probably from all the books you've been reading, it's not you who killed those people and destroyed the village, your mind is playing on your fear, that's all, he explained, Naruto nodded and clutched his teddy bear tighter to his body. Now I think your mother is worried about you Naruto, maybe you should tell her you were having nightmares, the third suggested, handing Naruto back his sketch pad, turning out the door Naruto was called back suddenly. You forgetting something Naruto, thank you bear he bowed. Hey where's my hug, the Hokage pouted, giggling Naruto threw himself into the third's outstretched arms hugging him tightly with his arms fall, the third gave a squeeze back before letting him go out the room closing the door behind him. Turning back to the window the third found that Cat and his team had returned, turning to Ibiki he demised him then turned back to the Anbu squad in front of him. How was your mission? The third asked as Ibiki closed the door behind him. Line, Grandpa what was Ko's first word? Naruto asked from his position on the sofa, causing the members of the room to jump in shock, as no one had realized he was there, during their meeting. Either Mum or Naruto why? The third asked knowing that there was an explanation for this sudden outburst. What was mine? Naruto moved on to his next question unfurling himself so that he was stood on the floor. Lord when you were three thinking quickly the third tried to pull the memory forward. It was demon when I was one, you were so angry I thought I'd done something wrong so I didn't speak to you again until you mentioned I should have been talking by now and I called you cage not lord, Naruto stated almost angrily, head bowed so you couldn't see his face. Why did you say demon? A shinobi asked, it's all anyone ever said around me that are monster, that thing should be killed, is it any wonder why my first word was demon? He snorted. Naruto why did you? The third got cut off. Because October is a bad time for me, I was wondering if there was any way I could go away just for like a week or two so the villagers can vent without me around Naruto requested, he lifted his head to reveal his bruised and swollen face, looking at Naruto the shinobi realized that his clothes were slightly torn and what they could see of his skin was either bruised or bleeding. Ill get Yori Takumi Asuma suggested moving to the door. You requested me Lord Hokage an old man with white hair that just covered his head and a mustache covering his top lip entered the room. Ah Naruto, should we not get that fixed no? He said holding out his hand to the young boy, taking the doctor's hand Naruto followed him into the adjoining medical room that was situated to the left of the meeting room, it had been specifically set up for Naruto. Seeing the look on the shinobi's faces the third explained a bit about the situation. Yori Takumi is the only doctor willing to go anywhere near Naruto, and the only one Naruto isn't afraid of as well, he's been Naruto's personal doctor since he was little, he explained, and I didn't know he was there either he stated, when did he come in here actually, he thought watching as Naruto came back out with a lollipop stuck in his mouth, holding the doctor's hand. I'll take him home, Lord Hokage Yori said as he walked towards the door. Wait can I leave the village or not Naruto pulled the lollipop from his mouth determination evident in his eyes. Where would you go? The Hokage quizzed, knowing that he would have to answer the boy's question. I have somewhere in mind, he twinkled looking over at Asuma mischievously, before moving over to the doctor again and disappearing out the door. Line, Cat needed to get Naruto back for the Mother's Day celebration with the Serutobis, they'd just collected the flowers from the Yamanaka flower shop where they discovered Naruto had a natural gift with flowers, had picked out a few orchids, a couple of daisies, three lilies, two pink tulips and a red and white rose, why did he ask for a lily and the white rose to be separate cat wondered. Line, cat, can we make a quick stop before heading home please? Naruto asked as the two were walking through the village. Sure, but where are we going? You'll see the childish glint in Naruto's eye didn't bode well for cat. Making their way towards the edges of town the duo slowly entered the graveyard moving past small area where the civilian graves made of white stone are situated through to the shinobi grave markers this area is considerably bigger and filled with a lot more white stone markers. Moving through the aisles like he's done it a thousand times before, 
Naruto stops at the twelfth aisle up, continuing moving across to the right, finally stopping at a stone marker near the right Naruto kneels in front of it head bowed, he whispers something so fleetingly that Kat is able to hear it from where he is moving towards him. Finally reaching the blonde-haired six-year-old, he is able to see whose marker he is stood in front of. Naruto do you know who's buried here? Kat asked worriedly. Of course Naruto replied place the white rose and lily on the white stone marker then bowing and making a prey Naruto moves away from the stone with Kat trailing behind. He'll have to tell the Hokage about this Kat thought as he took a glance back at the stone, reading the name Kashina Uzumaki. Line. Cat that's mum's cat lying on the floor there isn't it. Naruto pointed to the prone figure lying in the path leading towards the Sarutobi residence. Those callous bastards. Cat exclaimed Naruto. Don't touch it. Naruto. But it's mum's cat I can't just leave it there. Naruto panicked. Naruto it's. Cat hesitated by trying a different approach to get Naruto moving your mum will have to find out soon. There's got to be something I can do. Mum loves this cat. Mum needs this cat. Naruto there's nothing you can do cat's voice sounded defeated. Yes I can defiance in the edge of his voice. How the? Cat whispered in awe. When the hell did you learn that? As both Naruto and the cat were enveloped in smoke. Line. Kobe careful okay it'll be right back with some juice okay. Naruto said. Naruto left the front room to collect the juice for the two of them. Sayuri was in the kitchen preparing lunch. Konohamaru watched as Naruto left the room then crawled over to the chair pulled himself up into a standing position. Thoroughly pleased with himself he made sure he was as balanced as possible then toddled over to the doorway Naruto had gone through. Naruto had opened the fridge pulled a chair and located the orange juice, he carefully pulled the orange juice from his shelf and clambered down then placed it in the island, he moved the chair over to the cupboard allowing the fridge to close. Climbing onto the chair again he pulled out two cups one for him and a sippy cup for Ko, he clambered down again and this time moved the chair to the island, all under the watchful eye of his mother who was preparing the snacks of fruit for the boys. He carefully poured a little bit of the juice into the cups, when Sayuri picked them up and added water to a certain level on each cup and placed the lid on, while Naruto put the juice away. Ko toddled over to the island as Naruto was pouring the juice and clambered up onto the chair before making onto the counter as Naruto jumped down and moved the chair so he could put the juice away. Turning to place the cups on the counter Sayuri was surprised to see Ko sat there. How did you get there Ko? She asked. I walked, then climbed chair, thank you, he replied being handed the sippy cup. Well someone takes after their brother don't they? She said placing Ko back on the floor then handed Naruto his cup. He'll be out in a second boys, keep an eye on him Naruto please, Sayuri asked as she returned to the kitchen. Line. Kat and Naruto entered the Serutobi residence and started to place the various flowers in different vases and proceeded to place the flowers in different rooms. After they had done this Asuma entered the house with little Konohamaru resting on his hip and several paint pots in the other hand. Placing Ko down on his feet he toddled over to Naruto. We get paints, which room first? He stumbled through his words cutely. We're going to finish the play room first, Kat can you get me a copy of the photos I gave you please? Naruto told the people in the room. Disappearing Kat went off to do his job, while Asuma took the paints to the play room, Naruto took Konohamaru's hand and walked together to the play room. Naruto pointed to a paint pot which Asuma opened getting the paintbrushes Naruto handed one to Ko and showed him how to paint on the wall. This is the only time you can paint on the wall okay? Naruto asked Konohamaru receiving a nod he started on the on the wall next to Konohamaru while Asuma picked a different wall entirely. They were halfway through the room when Kat appeared clutching a load of photos. Naruto took the original photos and with practice these started replacing them into their original positions, while Kat took over painting. Returning to the room Naruto got Kat to follow him into the second room they were going to decorate. Can you paint that wall first please Kat? Naruto implied while pointing at the wall opposite the window. Nodding his head Kat opened the pot of paint that had brought in from the other room. Making his way back to the play room he found Asuma had lifted Konohamaru up so that he could reach the higher parts of the wall. Konohamaru was giggling in delight, as Asuma tickled him every time he moved his brush off the wall. Smiling Naruto walked over to the right hand wall that Asuma had finished painting earlier, making sure it was dry he started to draw out the shape he wanted painted on the wall like a mural, 
Asuma seeing that Naruto was back in the room moved Konohamaru so that he could begin on the next wall. He picked Naruto up when he realized the six-year-old hadn't figured out how to reach the high parts of the wall. When did you want me to swap with the old man in distracting your mum? He asked while lifting Naruto higher up the wall. When both rooms are painted, I'd like grandpa to do the calligraphy I am planning. Hopefully he'll be good at the fine detail I have planned he continued to draw on the wall. Just a little higher please he asked. Konohamaru came running over to the two, tugging on the pant legs he indicated across the room showing that all the places he could reach were indeed covered in paint. Cat entered the room at that moment, sensing this Naruto finished his outline and turned in Asuma's arms. Cat can you help me finish this room please? And Asuma and Ko can you finish in mum's bedroom please when it's finished you can swap with grandpa, uncle Suma, Naruto ordered, easily swapping places so that Kat then held Naruto, Asuma scooped up Konohamaru and proceeded into their designated areas, finishing the drawing on the wall Naruto leaned back into Kat's arms. Can you move me to the wall with the windows please Naruto pointed to the wall on his left, moving as asked the two drew the final pattern on the wall it took up the entire center of the wall. Pleased with his design, Naruto signaled that he wanted to be put down. Do you think they'll like it? Naruto worried. Stop worrying about it Kat assured they'll love it because you did it together and even when asked you won't say it was me not them. You'll include everyone. Kat lovingly ran his hand through Naruto's hair. Come on one room left till the Hokage takes over. Moving into the bedroom the two saw that the room had been finished and that Konohamaru was arranging the pictures into what he believed to be the earliest image with Asuma's help. Leaning over Konohamaru Naruto moved a picture that was bigger than the rest into the center. Eyes widened Konohamaru started moving the pictures to go around the center image. Watching this cat and Asuma turned when Naruto moved away, watching as he started drawing on another wall, he's really going all out Asuma thought. Leaving Kat to watch over Konohamaru he moved so that he was watching Naruto who was in the corner of the room drawing a rather elegant shape that started at the base that went up till it was too high for him to reach, picking Naruto up and arranging him so that it was comfortable for him to draw watched as the shape flourished to life. Done it Naruto Konohamaru called moving aside so that they could see his masterpiece. Great work Ko, now we just have to get it on the wall. Naruto smiled hugging his little brother close, looking up at Asuma he said you can swap with grandpa now. Line, I know that Naruto's up to something old man whether you tell me or not, Sayuri said her arms hooked through his arm walking through the village marketplace browsing through the shops, chuckling he continued walking along the road his daughter-in-law keeping pace next to him, they'd passed many vendors selling fruit, flowers, jewelry, gifts, vegetables, clothes and all other sorts of knickknacks. He told you about the nightmares? The third asked. Yeah, he hasn't seemed to have had any more, I gave him R.O., he sleeps better with that bear, I think, Sayuri replied. I wonder what how he knew about those events though. He's a lot smarter than you think old man she said intertwining her arm in his again, they continued walking through the shopping district, they were just coming up to a coffee shop when Asuma popped up. How about I buy you a cup of coffee sis? He smiled charmingly at the two while indicating at the coffee shop and holding out his crooked arm hoping she would take it. Now I know that whatever Naruto's planning you're both in on it, she shook her head he doesn't have to try so hard. I don't think he's doing it just for you, he's doing it for all of us the third stated hugging her close and then walking away, turning she took Asuma's arm and entered the coffee shop, making their way to the counter. She told him what she wanted and made her way out back out the shop to sit at a table set up outside the store, sitting down she watched as the village bustled around her, she was handed a cup of coffee as Asuma sat opposite her. I reckon one day Naruto will change the world, not just us or this village he will make an impact that nobody will be able to comprehend, she said cupping the coffee that Asuma handed her. That's because of you Asuma said, reaching across the table he took her hand and squeezed it tight for a moment. Line. The Hokage entered the house and made his way up the stairs where he sensed his two grandsons. Walking into the room he found both boys covered in paint and the floor thankfully covered in paper which was covered in paint. Kat turned to the Hokage bowed his head in acknowledgement, smiling the Hokage watched as Konohamaru with his hands stained green placed his finger to Naruto's nose giving him a green nose to add to his blue cheeks, blowing his bangs out of his eyes Naruto looked up at the Hokage, he tugged at his hair with red stained hands, it was too long in his opinion. Don't even think about getting another haircut, 
The third growled it's only just grown back and you're still being punished for that stunt. It's my hair he growled right back, if you didn't keep looking at that damn picture he muttered. Paint Konohamaru piped up holding up a paintbrush between the two stopping the impending argument, moving away from each other Naruto motioned at the wall by the window taking their paintings and bowing respectfully to his leader left the room. The Hokage found the drawings on the wall that Naruto had drawn, and as he was asked started to go over the sketches in the bedroom while Kat took Konohamaru to get bathed as he was covered in paint. Naruto was in the bedroom going over his sketch on the right hand wall, Kat had procured him a ladder so he could reach it all. His tongue was sticking out as he slowly and carefully added the detail to the drawing, he was about halfway through when the old man walked through the doorway. You're very talented, Naruto, even as a six-year-old painter, the third tentatively complimented admiring the beginnings of the mural. Do you think mum will like it? He ignored the compliment, worrying at his bottom lip. I know she will, now what was it you wanted me to write? He smiled, turning the worried boy in his hands. Um something wise and sentimental I suppose, when you've done that would you mind um doing this wall please, he asked pointing to the wall between two windows in the playroom. Of course Naruto, the third answered giving the boy a hug, climbing back up the ladder Naruto picked up his paintbrush covered in black paint and continued his painted ascent up the wall, chuckling the third made his way back to the bedroom pulling out his pipe he started to light it when a voice rang out. Don't light it up in this house followed by a second younger voice. No smoking in the house from the other end of the house followed by a splash and a squeal. Out of bath co, we've got to sort dinner out yet. Ramen came the muffled shout, Cat was obviously towel drying Konohamaru, smirking Naruto stopped his painting looking at where he got to he was nearly done just the last big detail and a few final touches. Last resort co, he laughed. No ramen he said running into the room bundled up in a towel wow he exclaimed seeing the mural Naruto had finished painting and applying the final touches. Hey, no dripping in the playroom Naruto chuckled descending the ladder, fine well get ramen but only when you're dry and dressed, if we get ramen today that means no ramen later in the week, Naruto stated crouching down to Konohamaru's level. Pouting Konohamaru crossed his arms fine he muttered. Smiling Naruto ran his hands through his little brother's hair before chucking him over his shoulder in a fireman's carry he charged down the hall to their bedroom. Line, Konohamaru wearing his yellow top with a red leaf spiral painted on the front and grey shorts was stood in front of Naruto, who was wearing a long-sleeved grey, top dark blue trousers and blue sandals. Ko can you show mum our surprises please, seeing the nod he continued, the flowers first then the playroom and then her room okay. Grandpa's here too don't forget, I am going to get the dinner okay. Okay Konohamaru replied ill set the table he turned walking out of the room and bumping down the stairs on his bum he wandered into the kitchen as he was followed down the stairs by Naruto and Kat. Line, walking through the village Naruto watched as the villagers bustled about around him not noticing his presence yet again, making his way past a store he felt Kat leave his side looking back at the store as the door closed, he couldn't see what sort of store it was, shrugging he made his way to Ikiruka Ramen Bar. It was run by the father-daughter team of Chuki and Ayame. Good evening Chuki and Ayame, how are you both today? Naruto greeted the pair. Oh hi Naruto Ayame waved from behind the counter, we're good thanks. Who asked this time you are Konohamaru? Chuki asked. Ko did, um can we have the usual please, one beef, two pork, one chicken, and one special please. Naruto asked adding on the extra meals, oh and then two beef and two porks and a special please. The two got to work preparing the meals, feeling Cat return he turned round to see that Cat was indeed behind him. Do you think Grandpa's Anbu guards are hungry? Naruto asked. That's very kind of you Naruto, I am sure they'll be hungry, Cat's husky voice rang out, not interested in where I went. He coaxed. I figure you'll tell me if it's important Naruto stated watching as the ramen was cooked, collecting the bags the two headed back to the Serutobi residence. Line. Sayuri was dressed in a loose-fitting dress with an apron and her normally kind and welcoming face was smiling at the flowers placed around her house, Asuma entered after her watching as she found everything that the boys had planned for her, hearing the padding of feet coming down the stairs he turned to see Konohamaru carefully coming down the stairs with the third walking behind him, finally reaching the floor Konohamaru ran over to his mum and hugged her legs tight. Happy Mother's Day mummy he preened, looking up at her and handing her the card he had made for her earlier. 
with the paint used for the rooms they had decorated. Come on mummy we decorated, he said pulling on her hand trying to lead her up the stairs. Oh dear Sayuri laughed, not oh dear mummy, we did good job, and we all helped, he smiled as he finally got his mum to follow him up the stairs to the landing, letting go of her hand he allowed her to go into bedroom. Sayuri's bedroom was painted a sky blue color and then there was a painting on the right of the wall facing you as you entered the room, it was a painting of a sakura tree blossoming and the blossoms floating in the wind, and written in kanji down the wall next to it in silver paint was the words, nature's peace will flow into you as sunshine flows into trees. Turning round she found she was facing a collage of photos, the photos ranged from now to back when she and Ikairu had first started dating, starting in the middle with the biggest picture and branching out around it were other pictures of them together, with Konohamaru, the old man and Naruto, the shape of the photos together was almost like a sun with rays reaching out. Moving out of her room she proceeded to the playroom which was previously unfinished was now finished. Had all its furniture finished and placed in the correct place as well as freshly decorated walls. There was the leaf symbol taking up the center of the wall as you walked in. The wall was a pale yellow while the symbol was a dark green color. And on the wall to the right as you walked in was a huge mural of the photo cat had taken when Konohamaru was born. It was a black paint copy of them sat on the couch the third handing Konohamaru. Naruto sat in Sayuri's lap and Ikairu leaning over the couch with one addition Asuma was leaning over the old man's shoulder, almost like he was part of the original photo, Naruto walked in behind the Serutobis he walked up to Konohamaru and placed his arm around him. Wow, that's incredible, oh Naruto, Naruto it's amazing Sayuri said with tears in her eyes, Naruto hugged her with Konohamaru joining in. Ko helped too, and so did grandpa and uncle Suma, Naruto said rubbing the back of his head with his hand, you always said you wanted it finished so we did, we finished it for you, and your bedroom too so you have somewhere tranquil and peaceful to relax and just be you, Naruto said. We got you flowers and dinner too Konohamaru added ramen, he grabbed his mum's hand and proceeded to drag her back to the kitchen where the table was set and the ramen had been placed. Happy Mother's Day mum, Naruto said as he hugged his mum in the middle of the kitchen, walking over to a corner of the room he tugged on something causing the anbu who had been stationed in that corner to appear. If you and your team are hungry I bought more so you could have some too, he said before taking his place at the table, slowly the anbu all materialized and picked up one of the extra servings of ramen and returned to their stations. Line, Naruto, you didn't have to do all this for me, the flowers would have done fine, Sayuri said running her fingers through his hair. You should nt have to do everything, and today's your day off, I just wanted you to be happy. I didn't want you to be sad when you thought of dad and that you needed a place where you could be free from your troubles, now with the playroom finished we can play in there while you relax in your room, besides you're my mum and you're special to me, Naruto stated. And me Konohamaru seconded, Sayuri scooped both boys into her arms and hugged them tight, I love you both she smiled. Two figures walked through the trees, the foliage shielding them from the burning sun high above them. The elder of the two dressed in traditional Hokage robes pulled off his ceremonial hat which he always wore. Wiped at his brow as sweat started to mingle there. With his long robed sleeve, looking down at his young companion. Hair sticking flat to his face and watched as he ran a hand through his hair. Water droplets cascaded around him, pulling at the neck of his t-shirt uncomfortably the child looked up at his grandpa wondering why they were outside in this heat. Sensing the question in the child's eyes the Hokage replaced his hat on his head and quickly moved between the trees to appear in a clearing, turning back he watched as his young charge managed to toddle through the gap in the trees that he had just vacated. Brandon, why we here? Konohamaru asked, once again pulling at his t-shirt which was sticking to him, looking round the clearing the three-year-old spotted a house with a small porch running round the outside with a shoji board placed on the walkway, the sliding door opened. Uncle Suma Konohamaru cried running as fast as his little legs would carry him and leapt into his uncle's, startled but outstretched, arms, your back, what you doing here? He clamored. What is it with you kids and calling me Uncle Suma rather than Asuma? He said shaking his head yeah I am back and it's an early birthday present from dad, this is my house where I live and you are going to help me put things away. But why you live here, what wrong with us? Konohamaru pushed back so he could see Asuma's face. Nothing's wrong with you, I was staying with you till I managed to get myself sorted as well as helping your mum, 
Kinda like Naruto stays with you, Asuma explained. Chuckling the Hokage joined the two on the walkway of the porch turning he looked back at the route they had walked and realized he should probably not have taken the scenic route. Can we give Naruto a birthday present? Konohamaru asked, startling both adults, neither one had thought about Naruto's upcoming birthday, both preoccupied with other thoughts surrounding that day. Line. The third was walking through the market district with Naruto walking alongside him, they were looking for a new book for Naruto. Naruto had exhausted his library at the tower barring the restricted section that was, but he wasn't going to trust anybody in there, especially a six-year-old, Naruto as it had turned out had also read all the books in the Konoha library that he had got his hands on, so this endeavor was proving rather difficult. Naruto the third called looking towards the boy staring at something in a shop window further up the street, glancing back at the window Naruto walked over to the Hokage, HMMING to show that he was paying attention. What do you want for your birthday? He queried. Naruto blinked owlishly at the third, I already asked to be able to leave the village didn't I? But that doesn't really count as a present, something you can keep, the third tried to explain. I don't really want anything, but you can keep letting me leave the village every year Naruto smirked. Fine, sighing what were you looking at anyway? The third asked. Nothing Naruto chimed turning back and continuing along the road. Walking past the window the third saw a hat with eyes and teeth and a black nose, which kind of looked like a walrus. Line. Sitting on the cozy little sofa in the living room of the Sarutobi house, Naruto was sketching in his sketchbook while huddled up in the corner of the sofa, Konohamaru was on the floor coloring a picture of some sorts, and Sayuri was sat on the other end of the couch her head buried in papers scattered about the surface area around her. Naruto what do you want for your birthday Konohamaru asked innocently glancing up at the two figures on the sofa before continuing with his coloring, Asuma stuck his head through the doorway from the kitchen area, Sayuri lifted her head from her papers and looked over at Naruto, both adults hoping that he would answer with an idea this time. I don't really want anything ko, if I need it I get it. How do you get it though? You've never asked me for anything, Sayuri stated. But there must be something thing you want Naruto. Asuma asked. Your pot's burning Uncle Suma, Naruto stated causing Asuma to retreat back into the kitchen as the smell of burning reached the living room. Not really, Grandpa's in charge of my money so I normally ask him for the money then buy whatever it is I need, I don't like asking. What about something you like? Konohamaru asked. You like books and drawing, what about something you enjoy? Makes you happy he continued coloring in an intricate pattern sticking his tongue out in concentration. Damn genius Naruto pouted at his little brother who took after him so much. Idiot the child stuck his tongue out at the older brother. Sighing Naruto placed his sketchbook down to be honest ko, to me it's just another day, besides I am never here for it anyway. Okay then Konohamaru said putting away his colors then standing in front of Naruto I still want to get you something though, he then turned and headed into the kitchen as the sounds of plates being placed down began filling the room. Why do we let Uncle Suma cook again? Naruto quipped smirking, placing his sketchbook down to join the two in the kitchen. Because he needs to learn to cook and because he loves us. Enough to poison us Naruto quipped as Sayuri entered the room. I am not going to poison you, Asuma remarked, clipping Naruto round the head playfully as he placed the dish on the counter. Sayuri took her place at the counter in between Naruto and Konohamaru with Asuma the other end also between the two boys. Making sure everyone was seated he pulled the lid off of the dish to reveal a chicken casserole, instantly the boys brightened, carefully placing a ladle or two on the plates set out before them, they dug in. Line. Asuma looked out over the clearing, which posed as his garden, looking out to the front he saw Naruto entering the property through the correct entrance. Glad you can come through the pathway and not the trees Asuma smirked referring to his father's entrance the other day. Sometimes he quipped Ko said you got your own house. Does that mean we can visit you or do you rather we not? Naruto dug his foot in the ground waiting for the answer. Naruto, you can visit anytime just try to give me some warning, besides I am not going to let you and Ko turn into old fogies like that old man, now I curious no longer around I figure I can help Sayuri out and get to know both of my nephews better, he said hugging the blonde close to reassure him. So what do you want for your birthday? What is it with you lot and asking about my birthday? It just another day to me, I don't celebrate it for the same reason you never thought about it before, now are we going to practice or not, 
he stormed getting into a stance ready to begin practice. Line, stalking his prey his blue eyes glistened in the light, creeping ever closer, with a wiggle of its rear Nami pounced and landed in an empty orange jacket that was heaped on the floor, finding the tassel Nami's eyes went huge instantly the crazed killer that was turned into a playful little cute fluff ball, clawing at the tassel, biting, flipping and purring, looking up at the person who had walked in on Nami's cute time, saw Sayuri staring down, smiling she reached out for the jacket. Naruto won't be happy with you clawing at his orange jacket like that she reproached the cat, who rolled over and standing began to weave in and out of her legs, what do you think Naruto wants for his birthday hem? I don't want anything mum Naruto said as he came down the stairs and walked past her taking his jacket and out the door, running back he hugged her love you mum, be back soon, he pulled his bag higher up his shoulder and met Asuma at the gates. Line. Mum can we throw Naruto a birthday party Konohamaru piped up from his seat at the piano in the Hokage's office, with the old man seated on the stool next to Konohamaru, teaching him how to play. He said it was just another day for him though, Asuma lazed on the couch, cigarette dangling from his lips. But if we celebrated it on the first Monday after his birthday, it would be a surprise and a chance for him to have a normal proper birthday for a change the third said pulling his pipe away from his lips and emptying the contents before packing it again and relighting it. He just hides from it, I think and he probably doesn't know what to do for a birthday because he's never celebrated one or been invited to one, the third stated running his hands over the next set of keys in the composition he was teaching his grandson. What do you think cat? He spends more time with you than anyone really. Sayuri asked glancing up from her tea, I think it would be nice for him. Moving from the shadows cat's mask appeared next to Nami who was lounging on the desk in between the piles of paperwork, reaching out his hand cat lazily stroked along the cat's spine. With the festival that happens every year on that date it's probably not appropriate to celebrate, so allowing him to enjoy a day would be good by him rather than shunning it as he does, cat answered. But what do we get him he doesn't answer when we ask, Asuma stated. He likes to garden, he's such a natural at it the plants he has are in amazing shape perhaps a garden would be an idea, or a new plant, he's thinking of asking you for his own apartment, in the housing district not too far from here he's already got it picked out he's just got to ask you for it Lord Hokage, Kat remarked. Kat's got to give a present to Konohamaru called from his seat at the piano. I've got an idea Kat smirked stroking Nami again before moving back into the shadows. He was looking at a weird hat the other day the third said. The one that looks like a walrus. Sayuri asked there are pajamas he could use too. Well make a cake and give him presents too. Konohamaru gleefully played the composition had been taught. Line. Greeting the gate guards, Naruto walked past looking out the path leading away from the village. He waited, teetering on the edge of the framework of the gate going on to tiptoes craning his neck. The gate guards watched a mixture of emotions crossing their faces. A shadow fell across them all, looking up they were greeted by two young chunin one with brown hair and dark eyes, his hair is combed down and falling in between his eyes, his forehead protector was worn like a bandana and was dressed in the standard outfit with his shirt stopping at his chin, the other had black shaggy hair and three white plasters one on each check and the final one on his chin and the standard chunin uniform on, and a cat masked anbu stood just behind them. What do you two want? The Chunin behind the desk sneered at the younger Chunins, talking to his partner. They're your replacements, the Hokage has requested your presence the cat masked Anbu stated from behind the young Chunins causing them both to jump, scowling, the two older Chunins stood from their desk casting a glare, and Naruto who had turned when he heard Cat's voice, made their way past the two younger Chunin making sure to barge past them. Are all older ninja like that? Naruto asked. I thought they only treated me bad, Naruto rubbed the back of his head sheepishly, the two chunin turned to each other and shrugged. I am Kotetsu Hagen and this is Azumo Kamazuki were the new gate guards, nice to meet you, they each held out a hand to Naruto who shook them. I am Naruto it's nice to meet you both, I am going to leave with Kat now, have fun guarding the village and the villagers, it's the best mission you can get, he said walking over to Kat who teleported them away. He seemed nice Kotetsu said relaxing back in his seat. Very polite Azumo agreed. Line. Cat teleported the two to the top of the Hokage mountain, looking out over the village, Naruto staring out at the tree line showing the village borders, sighing Cat walked over to the edge and sat down. I love this place, 
It's peaceful and serene and you can look out at the village and remember just why I love it so much. Life is hard and unjust and sometimes you find a little ray of sunshine that makes everything seem so much better, and you hope that will never change. Cat stopped to look up at Naruto as he came over to sit beside him. You're my ray of sunshine, Naruto. My sister died when you were born, she was my entire world. She was an Anbu medic nin, when she died my entire world crumbled but then I saw you this little bundle of blonde huddled in the third's arms. And then watching as you grew up with the guardianship of the Serutobis and the way you brightened the hearts, as I got to know you, you became more and more important to me, you're my precious person Naruto and I won't let anything happen to you, I want you to have as normal a life as you can, that includes birthdays, he turned so he was now kneeling in front of the seated boy. Happy birthday Naruto he said pulling out a small wrapped package and handed it to the surprised child, you should nt hide from your birthday Naruto. You remember how you liked the whole flying experience. Well I've got just the thing for you, I was about 5 when my parents died and I remember I came up here and the fourth found me and he showed me how to fly, he was an incredible ninja Naruto, but he was a great man too, don't blame people for seeing him in you, you're a great person too. Cat said standing up and walking over to the edge of the Hokage's head backwards arms outspread you ready. He said walking back past Naruto, who had stood up and followed Cat to his position further back from the edge, he turned and ran past the boy jumping over the edge arms spread just as he was nearing the bottom of the mountain he rearranged his body and slowed his descent using chakra and landed smoothly at the base of the mountain. It's just like flying, Cat called up to Naruto. More like falling, Naruto shouted down. That's what I said Cat muttered trust me, I'll catch you promise, he shouted up. Naruto looked around himself he shook his head and moved away from the edge towards the tree line turning he ran back and jumped over the edge, the wind flying past him was exhilarating, smiling he closed his eyes allowing the sensation to overcome him, with feline grace he only ever displayed around Cat Naruto maneuvered his body so that he would land perfectly on the ground next to Cat. Show off Cat muttered swiping his hand through Naruto's hair. Naruto pulled out the green goggles that Cat had given him and placed them around his neck before moving them up his forehead where they sat keeping his hair away from his face almost like a forehead protector, smiling he hugged Cat tight. Thank you Cat, Naruto whispered as he held Cat tightly. Line, coming out of the bedroom Naruto looked around he couldn't find anyone, it was slightly strange he could have sworn that someone was here, how else would he have got in the house? Checking more rooms upstairs he found them all empty. Moving downstairs he checked the kitchen and found nothing then he approached the living room as he entered the doorway he found Konohamaru coloring on the floor with Asuma sitting next to him trying to get him to color the picture correctly and their mum was reading a book in the armchair next to them. Uncle Suma don't you have your own house now Naruto said causing all occupants in the room to jump three feet in the air, turning around, three sets of wide eyes stared at him. Naruto Sayuri called clutching her hand to her heart, when did you come in? Asuma was meant to collect you later. About five minutes ago and I was early, Cat found me at the gates earlier anyway, he gave me these goggles as a birthday present, he said I should nt hide from my birthday. So you wouldn't mind if I gave you a birthday present too? Konohamaru asked cheekily, getting up and pulling a present off the sofa and handing it to Naruto, opening it carefully Naruto found a plant. He's called Mr. Uki, I picked him out myself Konohamaru smiled at Naruto. Thanks ko il look after it Naruto replied smiling. Well I guess you wouldn't mind these then. Asuma said holding out the rest of the presents to him. Sayuri who had disappeared when Konohamaru gave Naruto his present emerged from the kitchen carrying a cake. Are you going to open them then Naruto? Don't forget the cake. We've got candles for you to blow out. She said holding it out to him with seven candles lit atop the cake. Line. The door opened to reveal the third entering the house walking through to the living room he found two grandchildren covered in cake. Hey isn't the cake supposed to go in the mouth not around it the third smirked. Brandon Konohamaru called running into the third's outstretched arms, Naruto turned around to see the embrace smiling the Hokage released Konohamaru and stretched his arms out again. Where's my hug he pouted playfully at Naruto, smiling Naruto ran into the open arms, happy birthday kiddo, so what did you get? He asked. A plant called Mr. Uki, a new sketch pad, a set of kanai and shirikun for when I start school, this neat walrus sleeping hat and pajamas oh and a little orange book but mum threw it away, 
The plant was from Ko the sketch pad from everybody, the kanai set from Uncle Suma and Mum got me the rest, he giggled. And the goggles. The third inquired, orange book. Not Ika Ika, how does it keep getting into his hands the third wondered. They're from Cat, he gave me them first, he said almost definitely. Got room for one more. The third asked holding out a set of keys. Did you, did you buy me the apartment I wanted? Naruto stammered. Cat helped. I just finalized it. You're still welcome at our homes, Naruto we wouldn't expect it any other way, Sayuri stated. Now where's that cake? The third asked picking Konohamaru up and throwing him to Asuma. Thanks Cat Naruto whispered taking Sayuri's hand and returning to the living room to be with his family and for more cake. I called my granddad Brandon when I was little, and even now he will stand there with arms outstretched till I give him a hug. Typically when a child is 8 years old they enter their village's ninja academy, of course if that child's birthday falls after the beginning of the school year then you will on occasion get a 7 year old student, Naruto was one of these students, his birthday falling in October, however if you were a genius then you'd generally be entered whenever it was decided that you were ready to join the ninja world, as was such for certain ninja in the village of Konoha in the past. Look there's the thing. I can't believe the Hokage actually let that thing into the academy. Worse than that his son and daughter-in-law led it live with them. Lady Serutobi, surely not. Oh how scandalous letting a monster into their home like that, who knows what havoc it gets up to. You're not to go near that thing. You understand its trouble do you understand? I don't want you anywhere near it either. The parents tugged their children away from Naruto spewing all sorts of evil truths about him. Naruto stood isolated from the group of families visibly flinching each time a snide comment was made at him, he was thankful that Konohamaru was ill and that their mother was tending to him rather than being here, he doubted he'd be able to hide his disappointment from them, looking around he saw the teachers were every now and then smirking at him with a menacing twinkle in their eyes. Sighing he made his way into the classroom hoping his time would get better before the end of the day. Sitting high up in the back Naruto observed as the class filled with students until finally their teacher arrived, he noticed that many of the prominent clan's heirs would be attending the academy this year, he noticed the Uchiha heir Sasuke, his blue black hair hanging over both sides of his face to roughly frame his cheeks like many other members of his clan, this of course brought in a lot of the girls. One a pretty pink haired girl with green eyes and a blue kimono followed by a short haired platinum blonde with blue eyes wearing a purple t-shirt with a flower on and blue shorts from the color of her hair it was obvious she was a Yamanaka. Next was the wild boy Kiba with messy brown hair sharp black eyes with vertical slit like pupils and the distinct red fang marking of the Inazuka clan on his cheeks, he wore a beige sweater with grey shorts and a puppy in his arms, a brown haired husky boy with swirl marks on his cheeks entered and sat down. Choji Akamichi. Then more and more children entered before a dark blue haired girl with fair skin. Hanada Hayuga, her hair was in a heim cut style with chin length strands framing her face and white eyes, with a tinge of lavender, she was wearing a pale colored kimono, the Abarame heir was next he had dark bushy brown hair, pale skin and seemed quite tall, he was wearing dark sunglasses a grey jacket with a high upturned collar and dark trousers, the Nara air his hair tied in a ponytail then spiked in the usual manner as he made his way towards the back where Naruto was sitting. Line. The teacher began by introducing himself to the class and explaining that he would be moving the class into a seating plan so that he and they could learn their names, before moving on to the curriculum for the day which was geography. Okay so who can tell me the names of the five great nations, Naruto how about you? He said pointing to his blonde haired student. Kumo, Iwa, Suna, Kiri and Kohona. What are their cages called? The land of lightning has a rakage, the land of water has the mazukage, the land of the earth has the suchikage, the land of wind has the case cage and the land of fire has the hokage. The teacher was seething, body shuddering in anger, had been hoping to catch the monster out well if you're so smart it wouldn't hurt if you were not in the class then would it thought the teacher think you're so smart do you little monster get out of my classroom. He screeched, pointing out of the class. Don't move from that spot. The door slammed shut leaving Naruto spluttering in the corridor, wondering what had done wrong. Walking down the corridor a tan brunette chunin with a scar across his nose humming a tune came across a solitary figure standing on tiptoes and peering through the window of the door leading to classroom 1c. Sent out already that's a record I believe he smirked. 
Naruto jumped at the sudden comment and lowered his head to hide behind his bangs. Sorry sensei, first day of school is always the worst he offered wisely. Yeah Naruto agreed, try to make sure it isn't a regular occurrence he said watching the child nod, before moving off down the corridor. Line, get out, the teacher turned pointing out the door, the blonde child turned on his heels and left the room he had just that moment ago entered, the door slammed shut behind Naruto, with a sigh he slid down the wall till he was seated on the ground with his knees pulled up to his chest. Walking down the corridor the Chunin instructor Aruka Yumino was on his way to class, when he came across a familiar figure at outside classroom 1C, stopping beside the hunched figure he began rubbing his scar in agitation. Naruto the hunched figure looked up from his position on the floor. Oh, hi sensei, every time I walk past here, he motioned around the corridor I see you in this same spot, so tell me what is it that gets you sent out all the time. Naruto glanced up from beneath his bangs revealing hard staring eyes and a resigned look before returning to his original position, eyes widening Aruka backed away before continuing down the corridor to his classroom. Line, okay class today will be performing the transformation technique scanning round the teacher smirked when picking out his favorite student to torment Naruto why don't you start us off. Slowly Naruto rose from his seat and made his way down the stairs to the front of the classroom, glancing briefly at the teacher before turning back to the class, he took a deep breath and moving his hands fluidly through the hand signs gathered his chakra and with a poof of smoke became an exact replica of the teacher he was stood next to. The silence that shrouded the class was tangible, he performed it first time was the one unanimous thought running through everybody's head. What is he, some sort of genius? or a monster, Naruto, the teacher gritted through his teeth. Yeah, Naruto with a poof of smoke had returned to his original form and flinchingly looked towards his teacher. Get out, he strained through his still gritted teeth while pointing out the door. Why, Naruto demanded, excuse me the teacher replied in shock. Why, I did exactly what you asked, Naruto queried in anger in fact I always do exactly what you ask every time you ask me to and still get sent out every single time by you. The class watching in awe were stunned the one they had outcasted was back chatting the teacher no wonder their parents warned them of him. He's right actually some students were thinking. How dare you speak to a s-u-p-e-r-i-o-u-r in that way. You have no right, no respect. You will respect me in this classroom or you'll find yourself on the other side of that door more often. Do I make myself clear? Get out. He took a breath before continuing in a voice that only Naruto could hear. As long as I am your teacher you'll never do anything right, you filthy little monster. Naruto rushed out of the classroom before the door slammed shut on him. Sinking to the ground he pulled his knees up to his face and buried his head in his knees. Tears streaked down his face and his body shook with his silent cries. Naruto, Uruka questioned, Naruto continued to shake as he let out his emotions. Naruto what's wrong please talk to me Uruka questioned worriedly, he knelt down to Naruto's level and reached out to touch Naruto's shoulder when the child started talking. It doesn't matter anyway sensei Naruto replied talking into his knees with tears running down his face and off his chin. Would you like to come in my class? I'll even have a word with your teacher stating that each time he sends you out to send you to me how does that sound? Naruto's shoulders shrugged as he buried his head further into his knees. Uruka stood up to his full height adjusted his chunin vest then running his hand through his hair took a deep breath and knocked on Naruto's classroom door, he waited patiently for the come in before entering, as he entered he was greeted by the sight of the learning to perform the henge one by one they came up to the front of the classroom and tried to transform into the shape of their teacher with many amusing results. The student at the moment situated at the front of the class was a young boy with brown hair that was hidden behind a peaked hat, he had brown eyes and was wearing a white shirt and black trousers, he put his hands together slowly running through the hand signs required and gathered the wrong amount of chakra and with a poof of smoke became a rather deranged version of the teacher stood at the front of the class. Nice try the teacher encouraged the brown haired student before turning to Aruka Aruka sensei what can I do for you? Every time you send Naruto out would it not be better to send him to me instead seeing the inquisitive look on his fellow members of staff's face he continued it would keep him out of your hair now wouldn't it especially if he becomes more than troublesome. Sure thing sensei it will allow me to teach my other students correctly without any mishaps along the way, he's all yours. Thank you sensei Aruka said as he retreated out the door, 
When it clicked shut behind him he exhaled the breath had been holding turning to look at Naruto he found him in the same position. Naruto from now on whenever you're sent out you are to come to my classroom understand. Uruka said kindly watching for Naruto's nod which he soon caught he proceeded to walk down the hall come on Naruto he called back. Glancing over his shoulder he found the blonde boy was indeed following him without making a noise which is quite a feat for a seven-year-old in his opinion, just as his classroom door came into sight Uruka spoke over his shoulder. Naruto transform into me, Naruto hesitated before running through the hand signs and gathering his chakra with a poof of smoke Uruka turned round to find an exact replica of himself staring at the floor with a disheartened look on his face. Naruto that's brilliant why didn't you do that in class? I did he replied allowing the technique to end and opening the door to classroom 5a. Line. Hey cat Naruto called with hands in his pockets head downcast walking along the path. Yeah Naruto cat answered mask tilted slightly, he knew something was bothering his young friend and that it had to do with the academy but what he didn't know. Is there something wrong with me? Now why would you say that? Cat inquired. I am just having problems performing at school as all Naruto lied. Just because you can't perform at school, doesn't mean there's something wrong with you cat soothed, do you want to go through things together? Seeing Naruto's shrugging shoulders he pressed on, you don't have to be embarrassed to ask me for help you know that right? Seeing Naruto nod he continued he'll always be there for you if you need me, he places a hand on Naruto's shoulder, how about I treat you to something, maybe lunch? Ramen, he slyly inquired seeing Naruto's face light up he continued in the direction of the Hokage Tower. Line. Naruto sent out again this time through no fault of his own, damn Hibachi with his lazy eyes and beanie hat, damn bully, sighing he made his way to classroom 5a. This was never a pleasant experience the children in this class had an open hostility towards him, what with them being in their third year of the academy. Entering the classroom Naruto took a seat next to Kenta as it was a place he could easily escape notice. Kenta was a broad child which meant he'd be quite strong and big when he grew up, Naruto was handed the work his age mates were working on as Aruka continued his lecture to the current class. Line, Emi sensei can you do me a massive favor, the Hokages called me up on my paperwork apparently I haven't been doing it anyway could you perhaps teach my class Aruka bowed his head to his fellow teacher. I have my own class to teach Aruka Emi sensei spat. Could you not combine the two classes my class could use going over the basics again, please I don't want to get into any more trouble with the Hokage. Fine but if I do this, you have to take that filthy little monster out of my class permanently. Fine, fine thanks Emi Aruka ran off down the hallway, he needed to inform his class that they would be with class 1c today and that he should be back tomorrow. He created a clone and sent it to tell his class while he went to classroom 1c he had to find out exactly what got Naruto sent to his class every day, he performed a jutsu that allowed him to hide in the classroom thankful that he had seen Naruto with the cat masked Anbu the other day and had been able to ask about this jutsu. Waiting patiently he was surprised to see that Naruto had entered the room. On entering the room Naruto knew there was someone in the room, he even knew that they were located to the left of the blackboard. For what reason he didn't know, eyeing the spot curiously, he decided it would be best to wait and see what would happen, he made his way to his allocated seat. He lifted his desktop to find that someone had stashed yesterday's worksheets and notes into his desk, smirking he started to copy the notes and fill in the worksheet, when he was finished he placed yesterday's work back in the desk and his copied version in his pocket, just as he did that the classroom door opened and the rest of his class filed in followed by Emi sensei. Today class we will be joined by another class as their sensei has been called up by the Hokage as Emi sensei finished talking there was a knock at the door which opened to reveal class 5a, Naruto's eyes widened when Aruka's class had walked in, even more so when they were all asked to shuffle along to make room for the other class. So this is only for today, and seeing as I've still got my class to teach you'll be running over the basics with us today sensei smirked, history first, who can tell me about our Hokages? Starting with the first, scanning the room no one was willing to raise their hand who was the first Hokage. Kiba. He was the one who founded the village and took on the title of Hokage the wild-haired boy smugly announced. And his name, the teacher prompted, a pink-haired girl's hand flew up. He was Senju, Umhashirama Senju I think. Good, the second, the first's brother, was shouted out, and the teacher prompted Uzumaki. Toborama Senju. 
Brother to the first Hokage, he established the academy, the Anbu, the Chunin exams and the Konoha military police force which he gave to the Uchiha as a sign of trust. He was the teacher of Hiruzen Serutobi, Homura Mitokado, and Kaharu Yudatane now known as the third and his two advisors, he died in battle in the First Great Shinobi War. Sasuke, the third, the third is our currently residing Hokage, he trained the legendary Sanin, is known as both the professor and god of all shinobi, he passed on the title on, only to have to resume the role after the death of his successor the Uchiha reported from behind his hands. Very good Sasuke, now the fourth Uzumaki. The fourth was the third successor, trained by Jiraiya of the Sanin, he trained Obito Uchiha, Kakashi Hitaki and Rin, during the Third Great Shinobi War was when he gained his nickname the Yellow Flash and a flea on sight order in the Bingo Book, taking a breath he defeated the Nine-Tailed Demon at the cost of his own life, Naruto lowered his head at this. Aren't you a little smart ass today, trying to make the others sound like idiots, unfortunately I can't send you out today the teacher sneered, well it's target practice next so head out to the training stumps on section 2 of the academy grounds that should be enough room for all of us to practice. The combined classes filed out to the six training stumps located on section 2 of the academy grounds the two classes split into their classes, there were many mutterings coming from both groups one discussion why they were there the other about the way one student was singled out, speaking of which where was he. All right class one want you each to split yourselves into six groups then when that's done each group will join with a group from a different class the teacher appeared in a cloud of smoke. Looking around Aruka's class spotted their blonde-haired foster student at the back of his class. Right today we are going to be learning about throwing Kanai Imi sensei exclaimed as he moved so that he was facing a training post, he showed the children how to hold the kanai correctly and the correct way to throw it while suggesting that Aruka's class help with his class. Naruto threw the kanai at the targets hitting the bullseye each time wrong hand Uzumaki Imi sensei said after recovering from his shock at seeing a seven year old hit all the targets perfectly and with his left hand too. Frowning Naruto changed hands and proceeded to miss the targets which put him about level with some of his civilian peers. Dobi Sasuke Uchiha said as he threw his kanai at the targets hitting most of the targets close to and one hitting the bullseye, the girls all cooed while he smirked told you Dobi you can't beat an Uchiha especially if you're a no-name orphan he grunted at Naruto. Naruto do you want a hand? I don't mind helping you practice a purple-haired girl asked I am Yunkita from Aruka's class seeing Naruto nod she moved so that she was next to him and started by showing him how to release the kanai. Kanai practice was followed by Taijutsu practice this was split into two sections the first was building up their stamina and speed while the second was to get them started on their patterns. The children were started on laps the first to drop out was from Naruto's class the pineapple-haired Shikamaru Nara along with the always-eating Choji Akamichi, followed by most of the girls until the only ones left from Naruto's class were Sasuke, Naruto and the wild-haired dog Love Kiba and his puppy Akamaru, all keeping pace with Aruka's class who were in their third year of the academy. Yum dropped back so she was running beside Naruto, slyly she grabbed his hand and pulled him up to her original position running with Kenta. Kenta turned back to see Yume with Naruto in hand and tapped the boy running alongside him turning and running backwards steadily Kenta decided to introduce himself properly. I am Kenta Maki and this is Riku Hayashi he pointed to himself then the mousy haired kid running next to him, were Yume's friends, stick with us and you'll be fine, Kenta replied cockily, they continued to run in a group Kiba and Akamaru dropped out after a few more laps followed by a few of the girls and a few more of the boys from Aruka's class. Sasuke scowling at the group surrounding Naruto doesn't understand what they see in Adobe. Naruto was starting to lag found that he was suddenly dragged found by Kenta and Riku who had grabbed his hands pulling him forward with them, Sasuke was winded but still running he glowered at the damn blonde how dare he, try to prove his worth against an Uchiha he sped up again catching Naruto up and pulling him down so that they were both on the ground heaving for breath, the group were disgruntled when Naruto was forcefully retired but continued running. How dare you take out Sasuke just as he was catching those thread years the girls of the class screamed at Naruto if it weren't for them you'd probably have been out ages ago, Dobi they pointed to the group of kids who had helped Naruto keep pace, Yume dropped out on the next round with most of the boys and girls that were left, meaning that just Kenta and Riku were remaining. Ready to kick it up a notch, Kenta goaded Riku, you bet Riku replied putting on a burst of speed allowing a cloud of dust to kick up and leave Kenta standing still. Shaking his heading Kenta raced after him, 
The raced for four more laps before Kenta collapsed Riku jogged back over to his fallen comrade and stooping down threw Kenta's arm over his shoulder and supported his weight as they walked back over to the stunned class. You never could keep up with me but why insist on taking it up a notch? Maybe he does it to push you more than it is to keep up with you. Yeah he's gaining stamina but he's pushing you to excel too. Naruto said while Yum helped Kenta to drink some water. Riku and Yum looked at Naruto in shock they'd never thought of it that way before. Jumping up from his stupor Kenta smiled and turning to look at his friends saw their shocked faces. What I always do this he said come on it's patterns next and I am brilliant at those he smiled charging off to where the gathering students were. Riku and Yum just looked at each shrugged and pulled Naruto with them after their friend. Line. They met up with the rest of the class, as Imi sensei was instructing the students on the tai just you pattern that he wanted them to run through. Recognizing it quickly as the first year Taijustu pattern the quartet began to go through the paces, Naruto slowed his movements down and concentrated on the next move, he stuck his tongue out as he moved and it wasn't until he heard laughing that he realized everyone was watching him, finishing his current position he stopped when he heard their jeers. He can't even get the simple things. What a freak. Dobi. The monster can't even get the simple steps right. Most of Naruto's class jeered. While Uruka's class stood dumbfounded, there was no way he could have gotten the pattern that badly wrong especially on his own. Naruto flinched at every comment made, his head bowed in embarrassment. Making his way to the classroom with the rest of the class the jeers and whispers still making appearances, moving to his seat he kept his head bowed as they awaited the final bell of the day. As the classroom emptied a both teacher and students a figure emerged from the shadows, releasing the jutsu Uruka moved to the window and looked out at Naruto as he sat on the swing hanging from the tree in the grounds. So that's what happens to him, I just hope my class realize that he's treated unfairly too, he thought seeing Naruto staring up at him from the swing, before Naruto moved to take Lady Sarutobi's and the honorable grandson's hands and left the premises. He knew I was there the entire time. He'll have to take more of an interest in Naruto's study I think he concluded. Line. The next day Aruka's class were getting anxious Naruto still had yet to make an appearance in their classroom. After the events yesterday they realized that Naruto was treated so poorly by his class. Aruka too was getting worried. It was strange for Naruto not to be chucked out of his class. A student's hand shot up in the air. Sensei should NT Naruto be here by now she asked causing the rest of the class to murmur in agreement. Couldn't one of us go check? Kenta asked. Five more minutes Aruka replied looking at Naruto's empty seat worriedly. Line. Walking along the corridor Aruka looked through the doorways hoping to catch a glimpse of familiar blonde hair. Stopping at classroom 5A he turned seeing Imi sensei sat at his desk he looked in the room and found no Naruto but a rather sleepy looking child and a wild haired child with red clan markings on his cheeks still sat at their desks. Looking back round at Imi sensei Aruka scratched the scar running across his nose nervously. Sensei where's Naruto today? He hasn't been sent to my room yet. I haven't seen Naruto all day Imi smiled. Pulling his head back round the door frame Uruka moved away from the classroom continuing his search. Sensei a voice called. Turning Uruka found that he was face to face with the last child from earlier. He arrived just before you came looking. Try the roof. He suggested trying towards the playground obviously to enjoy what was left of his break time. Turning to the entrance to the roof he made his way up the stairwell. Opening the door he saw his wayward student sat with his feet dangling over the edge and his body tucked safely behind the railing, sighing in relief Uruka rushed over to him. Naruto, what are you doing up here? I was getting worried when you didn't enter the classroom, Uruka stated. Sorry sensei, I've just been running a bit late today is all, it'll be down after the break. You okay Naruto? Fine he said as the bell rang standing and walking back into the building. Line. Entering the classroom Naruto was shocked when the class surged forward. We were worried about you. Why weren't you here earlier? We took notes for you. We're sorry about yesterday. Your class treat you really badly. We were shocked and appalled. If you need any help we're here. I think they like you Naruto Uruka whispered as he walked in behind Naruto. Take your seats everyone. He's here now. We're all happy he's here. We've got to study now. Moving to his seat he sat down only to have several papers passed to him, skimming through them he placed them into his desk, turning to the person he was sharing the desk with, she smiled. You don't have to hide in here Naruto, just relax, they won't do anything to you Kenta, Yum and Riku won't tolerate it, 
you've got some great friends there Naruto, she said before turning back to the board and taking down the notes displayed. Thanks for watching.